Hello and welcome to finals day for the Razor Invitational Europe. We got Cup 5, our penultimate cup, and our final chance to see who will come out on top. Due to some um, issues around the world and that being various other events also happening, it means that our lobby is not quite full, but we still have plenty of action to bring you guys. I'm your caster, Kramer 3, and again, I'm joined by five wonderful people to help, well, four wonderful people to help me today. Of course, you only see three of us on screen. That'll be because we have our wonderful producer, Pepito, and our great observer, Q. So, we've got lots of stuff to look forward to. Let's hope that both Pepito and Q can keep up with us, because I guarantee you we're going to be all over the damn place. Ryan and Jack, how are you feeling about it? Yeah, amazing. Another day, another giveaway, of course. Drop the exclamation mark. Pringles in the chat if you haven't already to get yourself entered into the lovely 25 pack of Pringles giveaway at the end of game one. And for every hour that you watch today, you can drop the exclamation mark ticket in the chat. And with that, you'll get an extra chance to win a Razer Viper mouse giveaway. And if that isn't enough, then you can head on over to razerinvitational.com where we've got a massive giveaway going on there for thousands of dollars worth of prizes. And additionally to that, if you're good at Fortnite but sadly couldn't make it to day three, then you can tweet your moments to us using hashtag your chance. And with that, there'll be 10 awesome winners that also receive a Razer Viper mouse each. But as you mentioned, Peter, a lot of stakes today. And yeah, finals day, you know, really, really excited to see what's going to happen. There you see below is the tournament schedule. So our last tournament, sadly, is going to be our sixth tournament. It is running from the 28th to the 30th of January. Make sure to go ahead and sign up at RazorInvitational.com and get involved because you could be in with a chance to win all these amazing prizes. Of course, we've got a 6,600 euro a cash prize pool we've got plus 500 euro for the mvp which will be selected out of one of the players of the top three teams you guys can type exclamation mark vote join the discord and vote for your favorite player over there also 570 euro worth of razor peripherals up for grabs first to fifth place will get you prizes but you know i'm really excited to see of course the top 33 teams here today we don't know how many are going to be in, though, of course, as Peter, you touched on. Other events are on, so, you know, loyalties lie somewhere else, maybe. But, you know, we'll see what happens, and we'll just try to bring you the best of the, all the action. Without a doubt. We need to go to a quick little ad break. I guarantee about a minute, maybe less, we will bring you that upcoming game. So do not go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Hello, 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 and welcome to game one of our first of five games here for the finals of our Razor Invitational Europe. Again, going to be a really, really exciting game. And actually, we've got 30 teams in here as well, so we haven't missed out much at all. For the time being, it's going straight underway. Let's see how these teams fare. Absolutely, as you mentioned, not too many players. I mean, to be fair, we're only missing nine people. We're expected to be missing out on a lot more, but it seems like everyone is ready and raring to go within the server. You look across the map, fairly even distribution, and today it means everything, of course, our finals day, meaning that every point counts, and if you land in that top three, you're going to be taking home a money prize. But everyone will be looking for that top spot, that first place. I do believe it's 3,600 euros for the first place trio split between them, of course, so 1,200 euros per person is a fair bit of money for a weekend's worth of work. And so for this team... Or for rather these teams, they're going to give it their all and placement most certainly will mean the majority of that. As we look at the map right now, everyone seems to be very spread out and very content on their position. It might be a couple of early engagements. In fact, we've already lost four players. I think Stealthy Stronghold, I saw some arrows disappear. But at Steamy Stacks, there's a lot of fighting going down right now. We'll have to wait and see how things progress. And yeah, now we just see everybody pretty evenly distributed. You know, nobody's... Really engaged and early. I don't hear any gunshots anyway. Misty Meadows, as you said, is going to be a little bit hectic maybe towards the earlier stages of the game. And then we have a look at the map and we are going to see who is around or, well, who has to rotate and who oh, is this. sat in place. And I know they must look know, they must look know this, when man. I'm talking, they have to go straight to this trio. Of course, save it, right flat and slicks. We've seen them take home the last game of the day yesterday. They qualified, I believe, in second place overall um, for today. So we'll be hoping for maybe a second place and maybe even a first place finish. They'll be hoping to improve on it and see what they can do. But now we're just going to see Mappy, Zani and Fnazen. I believe we don't. We hadn't seen them. I don't think we did anyway. Um, throughout this tournament, maybe they were just in the lobbies that we did not see. But for now, we are having a look at them towards Misty Meadows. There's a few players around, but for the most part, it looks like people aren't really too in interested in fighting. They're just going to loot up. They're just going to farm mats and hopefully rotate or you know get into a decent position in the zone without being challenged uh, too hardly. Exactly, and for the time being, yeah, we've seen a few squads being wiped. That's actually only one a few downs here and there. But for the most part, it has been a bit passive all around. You know, we spoke about how the first day it is just constant elimination. Second day, we actually saw a fair bit of fighting, but it's this final day where everyone has the long con in mind. They always think of that final position. They always think of getting that first place, and so they avoid fighting. They want to keep their resources, want to keep their utility and mats up until that final precipice, that final fight, where then, and only then, they all come out the gate swinging. The time being, it'll be a bit of early fighting between Jedney and Amigo on top. Nothing to extremers. Looks like he'll try and just shut down that player's mats. So he'll be tagged down for his woes for jumping on up. The rest of his team there to support him, but for the most part, it is going to be a bit of a lull before the storm. Absolutely, and right now, as you mentioned, everyone going to be playing for the points via placement. There's no real need to engage, and zero point, or rather a zero kill victory royale is going to be worth more than, you know, around 13 kills. So it's it's really a trade in which you're willing to take, of course, at any point, by any means. If you can find yourself a kill or so, it'd be useful, but of course... It does not matter at the end of the day as Jindori falls. It's Tohaj and Percolino reduced to just them now. And Percolino on one point of health. He'll be taken down as well. It would be wise it to find it. And Tohaj, the last man left, he'll be eliminated as well. This is the curse of day three for this team once again. As they take an early exit once more. As we're down to our 28 trios. 82 players within the server. We'll have to wait and see how things go. And I see there's a couple of people complaining in the chat about keys and, and not being able to connect. Um, it is your fault, but get in contact with the admins. Check the uh, the invitational <laughs> announcements. There'll, there'll, be, there'll be support there for you. And no, we can't remake. So before you ask, this is it. This is the final state. We can't go back because you don't know how to click a button. So 
you best believe that we're continuing on through. And for these teams, it means an awful lot. It really does. You know, as I mentioned, 6,600 euros in cash on the line. And on top of that, 570 euros in peripherals, plus an extra 500 euros for the MVP. We're not going to remake for your problems. These teams, they're going at it. And it's a great start already. Ten players dropped, and we're not even into the first zone properly yet. Right, it's going at it today. Yeah, Jesus. I... I don't These even people, know, man, man. They don't know how to use their mouse properly. It's that's all it is. Oh my god! <laughs> Maybe somebody, if you are having problems now, seriously, though, get in contact with the admins. Uh, yeah. Just in the Discord, you know, you see what see what they say, see what has happened. But sadly, you have missed the first game. We cannot remake the lobby, but that's just the way it's going to go. But back into the action, you know, we're not going to see too much because everybody they're just going to be playing safe. You know, we've only lost what eleven players, so. We are just going to see people farming up now for the time being. And now, you know, it's it's not going to be too interesting. There's not really going to be too much to talk about. So I'm actually going to put you on the spot here. Uh, what? Who do you think? Who do you think is going to, you know, be a shining star today? Who do you think is going to make it into the top five? I'm not asking you who do you think is going to win, but who do you think that we should have a look out for if you have indeed seen, you know, who we have uh, in this finals there. Well, I am gonna uh, put... I reckon it will be G2 Tohaj. Again, he's had some great games. And, yeah, we've seen him consistently in this final day. But I don't think he's won it yet. And I reckon this could be his breakout game. We saw him fight earlier on. And he got, he got a fair bit of loot to go with him. I reckon he could probably come out on top here. Yeah, I, I'm not sure where... Uh... Rescard and Dretta and Scram are. I was I was having a look, but I couldn't find them. Maybe they didn't make it today. I'm not too sure. For the time being, though, I mean, my my headspace is in a completely different area. I think it it could be anyone really. But like, I'm looking at the the top couple of teams. You know, as you mentioned, G2 Tohash qualifying eighth yesterday. Um, I'm looking right now. Vortexia Ways in Milan. They were a team that uh, showed up most certainly in the last one. Flick, Gamma, Thomas, and Anas. I mean, another good team. It could be anyone, realistically. I'm looking at this top 33 right now. And quite honestly, it could go anywhere in any direction. We're just going to have to wait and see. As for the time being, though, outside Lazy Lake, it is going to be fairly silent. No one really doing all too much. We've only lost around two players since the last time I was on the mic. We'll have to wait and see. I honestly do not know exactly what's going to happen next, but most certainly things are taking a bit of a silent turn here. Yeah, you know, there's not going to be too much going on. Uh, why is it? He's just going to have a look, see what's around him. There is a team in front of him if he wants to take that engagement, but a lot of these players, they don't want it. They just want to play for their placement. They want to rotate, and we probably won't see too much fighting until we get into the later stages, you know, the third, uh, second and third zone at least as now with a minute left before the first zone reaches destination amigo on top leo the crack and ways they don't have to rotate too far they just have to farm mats they are already in the zone they don't need to worry about that but lazy like it's start it's starting to get a little bit congested as a few players rotate on in and there is a little bit of fighting i see flow over there and indeed, his teammate is taking a lot of damage. He's going to have to heal up. And now, Amigo on top, Leo the Kraken Wizard might get a little bit interested. They might begin to move on forward and see what they can do. See if they can, you know, catch somebody in the back, catch somebody off guard, pick up a few easy points. And, you know, all the, if you can get pick up a few kills along the way on your placement, you know, absolutely fantastic, of course. Placement will be where you're getting the majority of your points. As now we see why is it pushing into this building? They spotted out a player trying to go for a shot through the builds with that lever shotgun. Salon and Flo are just on the inside here, just holding their walls. As why is it now just builds a little bit of cover around himself as they begin to push on in. I believe there's only two of this trio left, so they could be in a little bit of trouble, especially because they are trapped in this house for the time being. But for now, everybody, you know, they're just playing passive. They don't really want to push in. They don't want to give away the advantage that they have. So that's why they are playing so safe as now. Petrol Can is going to be thrown in. It is going to be exploded just to try and burn the bills down a little bit. As Salon now, he is there for the time being. But all these bills are now on fire because of the Petrol. They're going to have to back away out of this. And they're going to have to build somewhere else for the time being. So to highlight as well... Um... Just to say, uh, the reason Nikov was unable to get into the lobby is because he had Fortnite running on the wrong region. 
Hence, he was trying to join a lobby with the same name. However, it came up as empty because he's on the wrong region. Again, do apologize for that. However, there's not much we can do. And as for like, what we do as casters, we we speak to the producer and the observer. And every now and then we get a message from the like guy who runs it. We don't interact with the admins. Like, we can't help you. We can't remake it's not it. Our Twitch fault. chat. Yeah, Twitch chat isn't the place to talk to you about it. The Discord is. So if you are, if you do need to join the lobby, you don't know how to follow it in the Discord. I understand that sometimes it can be quite hard to follow the instructions. Um, but, and again, I know sometimes the admins appear like they're not replying. Again, it's just they're very busy. Um, we're not intentionally trying to cut you out. So it's not that we're going, huh. This guy, this guy looks like he might win. We're not going to let him join. No, it is just, you know, we want everyone to join. We want everyone to have fun. But unfortunately, sometimes uh, stuff just doesn't work. But without further ado, it is going to be a bit of an engagement towards Lazy Lake right now. Again, let me go on top and cope. We'll get Zach Hart. looks to drive on off. And it's actually just avoid this fight. As the sign being, Vertex and Co. ring out a few shots. But nonetheless, they just avoid it completely. Driving off, heading for the high heels and just getting set up in this zone. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is going to be a very silent period for us. We know that players like to play very, very passive for Wisep and his team as the Storm Surge warning comes on in. We're still 1,015 damage above. That means they are in plenty of a, of a decent enough position that they can simply run away, hide, play passive. And it's just going to be as easy as them farming up some materials, going to box on up and just hope to play for the later stages. Actually... Going to go fishing with the harpoon for the time being, pulling out a flopper. These these fish, I mean, we've seen them pull amazing plays. Yesterday was a time in which I think we saw two helos with floppers. And I think we had, I think both times we had people with two full stacks of floppers, which is an unbelievable thought to have. But for the time being, everyone is fairly silent. A couple of knocks left, right and centre. Gamma Thomas picking up a kill. They would be my pick heading into today. Save it actually falling. Jersey also going to fall, and Veno FN also to Rifler. So at least the Savid squad going to try and bounce back into this one. But by the looks of things, we have just lost a team. It's Gamma Thomas to find the kill on to go high like Zara. And with that, why is it? He's going to get shot down, going to have to back on away. And they will look to try to continue their push on forward. Leo, far enough a shot with a sniper. Unfortunately, nothing on the receiving end. And with that... Everyone sits silent once again. Nothing too substantial going on. And it really does suck. Yeah, no. Not too much going on. Leo the Crack just firing off a few pop shots with his sniper. Seeing what he can find. See if he can hit a shot on the way. We've seen actually some insane sniper shots yesterday as now. Actually, a player being tagged up for white health there. Leo the Crack hitting a few shots. This trio, they've already picked up three kills. So, you know... An easy 15 points for them. That will definitely help them in the long run, of course. It won't mean too much if they go out now. As now, he will begin to just fire him up. Begin to rotate in. We see where the third zone is going to be going. And they will need to maybe build up the mountain if they want. As we're going to see, Slicks is going to be knocked up in the kill feed. And he is going to be finished off. It's going to be TT9 Shady picking up that one. As now, using this... River to rotate on down Leo the Crack and his trio trying to get safely into the zone. Just maybe find a little bit of loot on the way. But, you know, it's not going to, again, it's, it's not, there's not going to be too much action. We're just going to wait. We're just going to see what's going to happen. Vicky is going to get a knock onto Cabbage Crusher at 45. Uh, but for the time being, you know, it's not going to be too hectic. I feel in the next zone it's going to heat up a little bit. But for now, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see. Again, we'll have to see how they fare. Going to be very, very difficult for the time being as well to find action, at least, towards the centre of the zone. It looks like we've got about eight teams all ready to fight one another, but it's nothing too, nothing too substantial as you wait to see how they fare. Again, it's always going to be a mass rotation towards this third, fourth zone. We won't see anything too extreme until we hit that fifth, sixth zone where it starts getting really tight and when it starts moving, that's when we're going to get the main kind of fragment and the main body of this assault but for the time being everyone just looks to stack up together get to this high ground gets this elevation and then work from there and because this zone is up on a hill it means altitude is going to play a big big thing it's going to be so draining on these resources and i think every team knows that 
Yeah, absolutely. And as we have this time to sort of relax and to watch the game in its entirety as teams rotate on in. Of course, we still got two giveaways. If you're late to the stream, then most certainly it is your chance to join them. Drop exclamation mark Pringles in the chat if you want to join the Pringles giveaway. And of course, if you want to find yourself on the receiving end of a Razor Viper Mouse, we're giving away one today. Just drop exclamation mark ticket for every ticket that you have. Here's an extra opportunity for you to win. But engagement flooding on through towards the north side of this zone at this hill. It seems to be this car explosion most certainly is going to cause some problems. Russell, the leaves of a very big tree. And in fact, they poke the beehive. And the beehive seems to be in the form of Flagin, Azorni, and Mappy right now. All three players sitting high in the nest of their box. They're going to simply hide away. Tuck behind into cover. They're going to try and apply as much pressure as they can without dealing any, or rather, without receiving any damage and trying to deal everything. Because, of course, right now. This isn't about trying to rush in, hold W key and kill people. This is about holding on, trying to find yourself in this new zone and play for placement. You see right now, no action going on at all. There's no action really. I mean, Agro's just found a knock onto Aspect, but those kills are going to trickle in because everyone knows at this point, it really is just the, the fact that everyone wants to play passive. They want to play for placement. So they aren't going to risk their lives at all. And with that... It seems like everyone is just going to hold fire for the time being. They're only going to try and burn down the materials of others. And that is about it. Still 65 players within this server of the original 90. Still 24 teams of the original 30. Things are really starting to spice up now. Especially with this new zone coming in within the next minute or so. It's going to force everyone even closer together. And I think we might just see a storm surge. Yeah, I think everyone now is just going to rotate on in, try and get it. It's going to make for a really interesting zone considering where the storm is going because, you know, it's on a mountainside. So it's going to be really, really uh, reliant. It's going to be relying so much on builds. You know, you're going to be running out of mats. We're going to see a lot of people taking engagements. You know, do you go high? Do you go low? Do you go somewhere in the middle? It's all these decisions that these players have to make where they want to go. They're really just looking for space on this mountain to build, to box up, to be safe for the time being. And then if you can pick up a few kills, you know, along the way, then happy days. Anis and Flick picking up two quick kills there as you know, there's not too much going on for the time being. Players are just rotating in. Just a few pop shots here and there. A few warning shots, really. As now, the fourth zone will begin to shrink. A minute and five seconds until that will reach its destination. But, I mean, look how heavily congested it is towards the northwest, really, of the new zone. You know, everybody is up on top of the mountain. And nobody is really down below for the time being. Though, we are going to see a storm surge warning and the damage threshold Carlick, wolfie and splash they don't really need to worry about it they are well and truly above it but you know we are gonna have to lose a few more players i believe nine in total from now before the storm surge goes away the 11 boy are being spotted out here he's being tagged up a little bit he's actually being very hardly focused and we could see him eliminated here as he is being held he is going to be knocked and i wonder who picked up that one in the end as now it actually is Fnagin that is going to get the full kill on him and is going to take him down. As now, we see players going down and just spamming into boxes. And I mean, that's the problem when you go onto low ground. All these teams above you, they're going to see you getting into a fight. They're going to see you taking engagements and they're going to focus you really, really hard. And when you get focused really, really hard and you have another team pushing you, it's very hard to hold all your builds from all different angles. And you do get caught out, you do get knocked. And it could be your game well and truly over. As that now. little low. Oh, go on. Oh, Sorry. Oh, no, no, that's no, all no, right. If, if, hey, if you want to. No, no, no. no, no my apologies. I see how it is. Again, oh. little lull as everyone <laughs> stacks up towards the northwest side of this zone. Every single member looking to just hide in amongst their little box. No one wants to commit to it. And with the storm surge here, the second these teams are above it, they go straight back into their box. They do not rotate. We wait for that rotation to come back around with that zone coming through as well. At any second now, these teams are going to have to build along the side of a mountain in an attempt to stay both above the zone and above one another. So take a look at Splash and Wolfie right now. And as they look up, you see the kind of daunting landscape they have to scale just to get any form of high ground. And at what point do they just rule it out and accept they're not getting to this high ground? Again, looks like Gills and that whole team are going to be ruling the top, the summit, so to say. As for the time being, 
These teams continue making their way around in some desperate attempts to stay in position. But as Huka and Ko come up from behind, it's going to be Crocs who try and shut Smash down. He loses his shields. And with very little utility, actually, he might not be able to regenerate much. Any second now, we'll see this box combat come through as they'll try to break into one another and try to out kill or out damage. Absolutely. Now, everything seems to be very, very silent right now. Of course, a community event, you'd expect everyone to play nice, but of course, when there's 6,600 euros on the line, it most certainly isn't going to be a peaceful setting. People are going to be hungry to try and pick up these kills as we're already at around half of our lobby, a bit over half, in fact, 18 out of 30 teams. Everyone seems to be very, very content with where they are right now. Whoa, huge damage done to Hookup. And now he's dropped to around 10 points of health. He's going to have to try and med his way up. And two Scars firing help. His time is imminent as he's knocked to the floor. It's in fact splashed to pick up the knock. And Wolfie will look to continue the oppression, continue the firing onto these remaining two players. They know exactly where to aim as well. They spot players below them. And this is all about damage for them. They're not about the kills. They simply want to try and take this whole team out. They're going for the all or nothing. And it's quite a respectable play because, of course... 15 points within your name before you even account for placements. It's going to be a huge factor. And then we go once again. Storm Surge warning. Teams are going to have to be quite careful about that one. Wolfie going to back on across for Elvis and his team. They're going to be looking to rotate on in towards this new zone as well. But they've got the additional pressure of the Storm Surge. They're 195 below and that will be ever decreasing. Because this side, they're going to find their way on up. And they're going to get shot from behind as well. Spot out the player. Going to drop the wall and the ramp, and they're going to continue to move on through. Everyone seems to be quite content with where they're at right now. It's just a matter of how they can make this work. Yeah, a lot of players now rotating in. 14 trios left in the server as we drop now to 29 players. Rifle is going to be knocked. Onyx Zani is going to be taken down. Coco falls in the storm. As now we see what Relvis and his trio, for the time being, they are safe. As they begin to look for a little bit of an opening, Gildan is not looking too healthy. He is grouped up with Flick and Thomas. As now, they have actually already picked up a kill. Save it is going to be taken care of. Amigo on top, credited with that kill. As now, Gil. Anas will try and get up onto the high ground. He's actually hit a bouncer and now he is down on low. He's going to need to find his way up. Going to try and hit a bouncer. Oh. He's actually going to knock Revis. Oh. What a shocker oh. shot that was. He's knocked two people in the space of a second. As now, He's found two quick kills, but he needs to get away if he can. He's trying to use those bouncers to get up and up and up, and he's doing a good job of it, but he's still in the storm. He is going to go down. It's a valiant effort, but it will go by the wayside. Thomas is now the only player left from this trio, as now he is in the storm for the time being. He's going to need to try and build his way out now, just waiting. As now the storm will begin to move around him. He can survive. And I mean... What a hectic moment that was. We're down to six trios. Peter, this is getting absolutely insane in the last few circles. Mm, without a doubt. And for the time being, Ermont as well. Last man left standing for his team. He'll try and catch out the odd player here on there, but his kills are coming through. It will be down to five scores left. Seven players left standing. Ermont low on HP, trying to catch our player before he's taken down. Not able to do so, though, as he is finished. It goes four scores left, six players left standing. AOS Joe, one of the only players left alive for his team. He'll just pick up the odd bit of shields here and there. He's got a shotgun to assist him, but death from above. Lushi there to shut him down. Again, three scores left now. We're entering that gritty zone now, in a which this player's going to catch on up. Lushi is again five players or three players left standing for their team. Five left standing total. Again, they've got a fair few kills to them already. He gets seven kills to their name. And for the most part, they're just going to look to hunt through this foundation to try and catch out these players around them. Things are taking a toll for the quiet. Because right now, everyone is simply trying to just live the storm. Lushi going to fire a couple of shots. Charge shotgun and hang. Eclipse going to apply the pressure from the height as well. And so... Considering there are three teams and five players, we know that this is a trio. It's a three versus one versus one, and that is the harsh reality. They're going to use a bouncer to get on. Down Eclipse going to sail on down. He spots out Gamma Thomas. And it's the Dragon's Breath that misses. The charge shotgun shot going to catch him completely off guard. He has popped a shield fish, but with 10 points of health, he might actually go down. Lucy going to drop 
at least a shot onto the head of Gamma Thomas. And with that, they're going to take themselves the Victory Royale. The first one of the day. A comfortable eight kills between them. But, you know, I mean, a gr valiant effort from Gamma Thomas. It was a great play from him to come second in that scenario with only two people alive around the 15 player mark. He did exceedingly well. And with that, that's going to propel them up the scoreboard. Of course, finals day, that's the only game going on. So what you see is what you get for the scoreboard. And so I think we know who's going to be the, uh, the current leaders of the scoreboard right now. But things can change. Yeah, 100%. That trio are going to be on top anyway. 70 points for the victory. But they're not the only ones that are after winning because as I just looked to my left, I believe it is Coolio has won the Pringles giveaway. So congratulations, Coolio. Make sure to have your whispers turned on. One of the mods in the chat will contact you and they will try and get that sent over to you as quickly as possible. But we are going to jump into an Intel moment. Peter, do you want to take this one away? Without a doubt. Again, take a look at that. over at Anas and Flick now. Guild, this team, very kill heavy. They placed fairly highly. Unable to get out anyone, though. Of course, he saw that shotgun blast in mid-air to get an early kill as well. Great stuff by him. And Ermon as well, being the last player left alive in his team. He tries as much damage as he could before he inevitably falls. Yeah, we tried that here. However, he was swarmed. Only 10 HP remaining. He's instantly taken down. Same for Joel again, his killer. Again, killing him was enough. Unfortunately, as he tries to rotate away, Death from above comes through. Our inevitable winners, Lucy and Co. Able to find that early kill. Eclipse taking the fast track down to chase down Thomas and to finally execute him. Again, a summarily quick kill and a very, very quick finish. Lucy and Co. As they go on ahead, they take a victory in this first game. And well, with that, they definitely set a very scary message the remaining teams yeah as you can see the scoreboard right now flick and, uh, and gamma thomas actually scraping first place lucy eclipse and co are in second and we're seeing you know the scoreboard is going down quite drastically we go from 120 points to around 70 very very quickly between first and third but of course that doesn't mean everything this is only game one we've got five games ahead or rather four games ahead one just played and so this scoreboard it's only the beginning. It can change rapidly, very, very quickly. And of course, even teams at the bottom can make it all the way to the top. But of course, you know, save it. Your pick, Jack. We know you're a, you're a lover of the uh, of the flag. The, the heritage sticks within you. They are currently ranked not too badly. Eighth place. A lot to change. You know, these teams at the lower end, as I mentioned, they've got plenty of time to get on up higher in that scoreboard. And of course, every opportunity is going to be presented to them. Four more games ahead of us. Let's see what they can do. Uh, yeah, let's see what they can do indeed. That is it for game number one. Coming up after this short little break, we are going to have game number two of finals day of the Razor Invitational Europe. Don't go anywhere.
Hello, hello, and welcome to game two of the Razor Invitational Europe again. We have got another great, great game on our hands, really another exciting game on our hands. And after watching Thomas and Co. go ahead and take that first game, everyone else in this lobby is going to be out for blood. It's a fairly sparse place, split of everyone around this map. Again, nothing too extreme, nothing too, nothing too impressive, at least in terms of early contact. Instead, it will be a fairly slow start to get things off underway. Absolutely. We know at this point in time, people aren't going to play aggressive. They're not going to hold their W keys. It's not going to be about trying to find any kills in the beginning. It's about looting up and getting ready for the late game, the all-important late game, because everyone knows how good it is to get that victory royale, those 70 points under your belt. It's most certainly a needed request if you even want to be top three you know i don't think i've had a single i don't think we've had a single time where the winner has won without winning a game i think it's happened once in the four cups already and this is obviously going to be our fifth and so i think it's safe to say that at this point in time you know placement means a lot i think the team that didn't do it they actually came second twice and third twice as well i do believe it was something ridiculously strong like that couldn't close out a game but of course, points are points at the end of the day, and they definitely took the trophy home. And so, for now, teams will realise swiftly that this isn't about trying to aggress. This isn't about trying to hold W key. This is about playing passive. This is about playing your late game, your smarts. You've got to be patient with it all, because if you start to hold W all too much, you're going to be punished for your problems, and that therefore might mean an early exit for you and your team. And that's really going to take you out of the equation majorly for the top one, and quite possibly could relegate you from the top five in all in all. Yeah, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see what's going to happen. Early game is always really different, you know, on finals day, because... We're, we're so used to everybody just holding down W, like sprinting at people, absolutely no regard for your life. Like if you go down, like you go down, you only need, on the first day anyway, you only need to win maybe one and place maybe well in one more game to, you know, qualify. But for now, like placement means everything. So we see teams playing really, really passive. And uh, so we see now early on, it's going to be Hyphen, Noah and McConey who are just sat here towards Sweaty Sands trying to take a little bit of an engagement. I believe it is Ghosty out there that is caught in the open and needs to be careful that he doesn't get sniped. There is a player building up now behind Hyphen and he realizes that he's now going to begin to apply a little bit of pressure, but he has lost height and he has absolutely no build, so he's going to have to drop out and maybe try and farm up some max before he gets involved. As now his teammate is being put under a little bit of pressure, he's going to have to run over and try and help him out and that go. Akama Ghosty is going to be taken down. There's now a nice snipe shot. Jersey is going to be taken out as well. He might be able to pick up a few builds here. He does. He's got five. Now he can walk up and maybe finish that kill onto the player above. But there is Venom there down ready and waiting. Who is just going to hit him with a few shots. He's down to AHP. He needs to heal up. He has to pop a make it. Has to maybe hope that Noah can hold for him. Going to be dropped over a flopper. Quick bit of health for him because as we all know numbers advantage is everything so now it's a two versus one as Venno is in this building here trying to go for a little bit of a right hand peek he still has shield available and he's gonna pop some more as now Noah he begins to have a look he's gonna build up he needs to farm up mats here where he can Venno gonna pop out he hits nice shots he tags him down very low but Noah's been tagged down low himself all these players in this engage engagement they have no shield except for Noah who is be gonna begin to heal up. Venno has found a little bit of healing as well. But for now, he's down low. His teammate is gonna be dropped, so the siphon is gonna come in there for hyphen. And now Venno last alive. He's around 20 HP. I don't hold out much hope for him. Hyphen tries to go for maybe a little right hand peek down below. He is just gonna build up. He actually puts Noah under a little bit of pressure, but he is gonna be knocked. He is gonna be taken down. It's gonna be hyphen Noah coming out on top in that exchange. And I wonder will they be able to pick up their mate's card? I don't know if it has been too long, but they might just be able to. And look, here is Nikov, Blastor, and Alpha. They are in this game. They figured out how to change their region, and they are in the game, ready to go. Without a doubt, so to highlight as well, while this was happening, I looked up in the kill feed, uh, Save It and Co. instantly annihilated. They've, they've been killed, they're out, they're gone. Rough. That, yeah, the top 10 team instantly gone, and, and because of that, it kind of shows you how um, kind of unstable this to these top teams are, you know? You could, every single team here has the potential to kill one another, 
And well, that's embodied now. The Savid team being eliminated. Now we take a look over at Pablo Wingo, the team that actually did eliminate Savid and Co. Looking to pull on ahead and fight the other team here over towards this position again. Bring out a few shots wherever the possible. Try to break in to these positions. This P90 trying to ring true. Not able to catch anyone just yet, but for the time being, it's going to be a very, very good position for Pablo Wingo and Co. If they're able to get this second ki group kill as well as the gear alongside this area. Yeah, absolutely. It seems to be that they are quite content with playing together at this point. You see all three players sticking in cro close proximity, excuse me, to each other. They're not really going to try and give any advantage where possible because as soon as you enter a gunfight with only two men at hand, you know, you're going to be put under a serious disadvantage if that third player isn't there in time. So they are just going to sit next to each other. They are going to just afford to run away with each other and just try and get out of this scenario. They don't want to aggress. They don't want to try and find themselves in a bad position because they know the importance of placement. They know that a victory royale will trump no matter how many kills they try to get in this game. And so now it's as simple as getting away. They don't want to aggress. They don't want to push on forward. They are simply going to run away. And for Cookie and his team, they're going to do the exact same. Just north of Holly Hedges right now, they are just going to continue to drive on forward. Going to stop off at a couple of places here and there, loot up where possible. But looking at their inventories, they've got a fair bit of loot behind them. And now they are going to run right into a loot llama. And in fact, he's just going to drive right on over, hit it like a pinata. And they are able to just continue their movement on forward as a team together towards this new zone. And yeah, almost like roadkill there. Absolutely crossed by it as now we see. Bucky, Shady and Birch, you know, they're just going to... Find whatever loot they can get. Of course, that llama will definitely help them in the long run. They are going to continue to move on towards the first zone. If they have a harpoon, which they do, they can maybe stop off at this fishing hole, but they've decided against it. We're going to jump into the POV of Hellfire, Lucia, and Boyer, who are just taking a few pop shots. They're not, you know, doing too much. They're just taking a few pop shots at a team that are beginning to rotate in. I believe that team are already in the zone, so just trying to waste a few mats for that team just trying to be annoying at this stage really nothing too you know interesting happen as happening should i say as now they will begin to move on out actually hellfire is going to be swapped or he is going to swap over for a heavy assault rifle with his teammate as he might be a little bit more accurate depending i didn't realize i didn't see what gun he had i think he had a uh, just a normal let our purple epic assault rifle as yeah boyer has now that in his hands and for now again another lull we're just gonna have people farming up there's absolutely no action so even if we wanted to show you we couldn't um <laughs> and now they're just gonna begin to farm up mats as now boyer he's really full t t9 shady is gonna be knocked by etq nice snipe shot there by boyer won't connect though as he tries to go for a little bit of a quick scope, he is just going to need to box up here. He's caught out. Now, he's in between two teams here. He needs to be a little bit careful of what he does with his peaks because he could be caught out. He could be sniped in the back and he could be taken down. Shady is going to be fully eliminated as the team now that are in the gas station or petrol station. They're just going to farm up the mat, going to place walls down and see what they can find see if they survive i don't imagine there's going to be too much of an engagement here people are just going to wait and sit and see where the next storm goes without a doubt for the time being these teams do sit up at the ready again every single one of them wanting to fight one another but none of them actually committing to it because they know the second they do they're going to get third party pretty substantially again boyer and co they do actually have a fairly isolated area with only one other team but they don't know that there aren't other teams hiding in a box ready to attack them again we look at uh Marlox now again with this little phase trying to just get away from the open trying to get into a more comfortable position for the time being fortunately the colossal coliseum also offers little to no natural cover as he desperately tries to just hide behind one of these houses again go to the edge of the zone hoping that that way he might be a bit less well focused again with so only 70 players left standing the second zone closing in i think it's safe to assume we are going to have a storm surge almost momentarily now as these 23 teams will scramble to this big white ring yeah absolutely and you see marlon right now trying to do his best to grab some ammo from outside the zone finally gets it after many attempts unfortunately for him 
He's going to just continue to aggress on forward, just north of the Colossal Coliseum, him and his team lie. It seems to be they're doing very well, though. They're on their own. They're in the north side. They have no problems. But south of it, or rather towards the southeast of it, we see Hellfire and his team, Boyer and Kluja. They are going to be clumped up into a one-by-one -one together, by the looks of things. They are going to try and expand their empire and get themselves in a more comfortable position. But as you said, not, nothing too much is going to happen right now. This is just going to be as simple as waiting out. They're not going to aggress. They're all just going to play in their boxes and do damage where possible. It isn't about taking fights at this stage because there are still 23 teams left. That's 22 teams you have to wait out before getting a victory. And even then, if you want to start to get points for placements, it's still another five or six teams to get dropped before you even start getting at least three points for your placement. Never mind the 70 for that victory. So right now... It really is just going to be the silent treatment across the server. No one is going to offer any form of aggression. No one really wants to pick the fights. They'll take them where necessary, but not where they have an opportunity to not take it. As ETQ will get the knock onto Myro. And with that, it might just drop down to 68 players within the server. But still a plenty of players across the server. As we head into our final 70 players, and it's not even the second zone yet. It seems to be this lobby is going to last for a fair while. I think everybody's, you know, they're just happy enough where they are. Hera spots a few players over towards Lazy Lake. We could see a little bit of an engagement now as players will begin to rotate into this second storm. Splash is just ahead of Hera and Denny and Joku will just be behind their teammate as he begins to push on over. It might look for a little bit of a snipe here. Harlick has spotted him out though and is going to build so there's going to be no free snipe shot in the back. They are split from their trio as the other player is a little bit further on. Wolfie, that is, is now Denny. will begin to swim downstream and pick up a little bit of speed and have a look for a snipe. He goes for a shot. He isn't going to hit it. And now, you know, for the time being, he's in the zone. He's just going to farm up mats. He needs to be careful that he doesn't take damage from any sniper. It would, you know, initialize a push from some team. But now... We see Flick, Anas, and Thomas, who, again, you know, people are just going to be sat in boxes. Everybody, it's just going to be quiet. There's not going to be too much fighting at all. We see the third zone is going to come in. It's going to force Flick, Anas, and Thomas to begin to rotate. They're going to have to move west and go towards the desert. But for the time being, everybody's happy. Everybody's sitting in their boxes, peering out of their cones, and we are not going to see too much altogether. That, that, and we are going to have to see just something come this way. We look at Denny and Co. They're actually going to have to rotate towards the zone, as will a fair few other groups. So we might see a kind of fight on the run where these teams just have to fight amongst one another while trying to get out of the zone. And I think Denny's seen the rotation. He knows the team's there. I think any second now, he might try to bring out a few shots on them. And if my team does, contacts maybe he misses his initial shot, but special loses shields for the follow-up AR shots. Again, they continue trying to pressure them down. That zone is closing on in, and that zone will do a substantial amount of damage. Now we enter the latter stages of this kind of mid point of the game. Again, the third zone closes on in. These teams attempt to fight one another. Denny as well, just trying to get on top, just trying to get in front and trying to, well, find one. But for the most part, it's going to be a bit of a lull as neither team wants to commit to the full push. We hear those charge rifles charging on up. Again, Denny, he'll lose most of his shields. He's got a chance to reinvest them, though, as he's covered by his teammate there. Again, taking that shield, mushing on it lovely before able to commit to the next bit of the fight. And for a moment now, it's a bit of a lull, a bit of a breath before the plunge, so to say. <laughs> that breath before the plunge, I swear you love it too much, don't you, at this well, point? Well, I mean, quite before the storm has apparently been coined by you guys, so i got to think of something else. Yeah, I mean, anyway, there is no breath now because everyone... Is going to be exhaling out of pure panic as there is a gunfight going down right now. Of course, Denny and his team originally had a great opportunity in escaping. And I think Denny's just going to edit it. Going to sink into the sand and try and rotate on out if possible. And he'll do exactly that. Get on down. Burrow beneath the sand and get on out. He does not want to risk a thing. He's going to continue to get shot. He's trying to move his way around. Has taken a fair bit of health in the process. But fortunately for him, he's got minis. He's got med kits. He's got large pots with his teammates. Everything will be good for the time being. They were able to rotate quite safely. Admittedly, damage is damage at the end of the day. But they've just got to be careful enough. There are 
A fair few players still within this server, though. 67 players, and the third zone is about to form. I would not be surprised if we see a storm surge here. I admitted it would only knock off a couple of players, but still... It's pressure. It's much needed pressure because right now this game is going way too slow. Everyone is just holding up in their boxes. They're not going to try and push anything. They just want to play smart. Splash is going to find the kill on to Denny. In fact, it was the knock and Coralic with the finish. And with that, we're down to exactly a third of the lobby done and dusted. 66 players out of the original 99. 23 teams remain. Things are going to get very, very silent now. Yeah, everybody just boxed up. Everybody having a look as we see. You know, 66 players left. You touched on that as Snasty is going to be knocked. Vitality, Nico, Blastor, and Train H Alpha. We've seen a lot of them, you know, throughout uh, previous tournaments. And they make it yet again to another finals. As now, Blastor, he had a peer out of his box just to see if he could spot anyone. But they were already in their sand tunnels. It wasn't really worth wasting ammo on them as he doesn't have too much of it, I believe, you know. Only 84 AR bullets, so he's going to need to pick up some there uh, along the way. Maybe if he can pick up a few kills, he can pick it up off uh, a corpse of his enemy. As we see, I believe it was Gambit Luke has gone down. And now Noah, Hyphen, and McConey, they're going to begin to push. They're already on four kills, and they're going to get into this build and have a look to see what they can find. And they find two quick kills. They make it to six. They find loads of floppers as well if they want to bring them along. Lyric and Jamside, they are going to be taken care of. They are going to be eliminated from this second game. Now, 11 trios gone. The storm begins to shrink in the fourth circle. Look at the amount of arrows that are around here. This is absolutely ridiculous. As now we see the storm surge warning. Just about to talk about it. We are going to have to lose 12 more players in the next few moments. Of course, down to 50. And then that storm surge warning will go away. But... For the time being, everybody has a chance to see, you know, where they are. Of course, Nikov and Co. They are 600 above. They won't really need to worry about it too much unless the players below them absolutely start popping off. But I sincerely doubt that. For the time being, they are just boxed up. As we see, another kill gonna go the way. We're actually after losing two players in the space of a few seconds. It is Joku and Waki gonna fall. Fnajan and Wingu picking up the kills. Demon Veki is gonna be knocked. And ASO or AOS Joel is going to follow. Parallel going to be killed as well. But for the time being, what we see now is just Nikov and Co. Boxed up, peering out of their cones, seeing if they can spot anyone on the rotate. But now, what most of you guys in the chat are looking for is the POVs of Thomas, Flick and Anas. Now, they're just underneath a few players here, just trying to have a look. Tam Thomas peering up through the builds milan begins to focus him a little bit so he needs to be careful you don't want to take shots from them the storm surge is going to become active we need to lose five more players in the next few moments and we will continue to do so rather this is going to go down i believe i believe he's going to be rezzed here though this team are above the damage threshold we've lost another player in the time being it is going to be arian that goes down and now, Wisep and Co, they are just going to be into rotate, I feel. But now, they're being put under a little bit of pressure. They need to be careful. Maybe build on down and maybe have to hit a few sniper shots. But it looks like they've backed away. It was not Hellfire that began to pressurize them a tiny little bit. But for now, they're going to back away. Wisep, Amigo on top. And Co, they are going to be able to rotate on in. And for the moment, you know... It's a tiny little bit quiet. I heard somebody get sniped there. Oh no, as now we see the Storm Surge still ringing out. We still need to lose two more players before that will go. Washed Wiz will be knocked. Splash going down as well. Few quick kills coming here and there. The Storm Surge will now go away. But ETQ, he's focusing on the Milan Trio over there. They will go down. They will be eliminated. And now ETQ, Pablo Wingo and Downs, they are in a great position they are up on the high ground they're already in the zone and they could really apply a lot of pressure to the players down below but now it's going to be this continued shots out around the board this zone suddenly moving on in and once again we will see a mass commitment to these gunfights etq looking to just shut out anyone who dare come his way or dare even consider peeking him for the time being, as we move on to the sixth zone, the final zone, if at least the final static zone it is, as that movement comes in, everyone needs to start making that mass exodus towards 
the other zone. In 20 seconds or so, we will see this push come through. And for the most part, at least I think for now, we avoid the storm surge. But players need to fall quick. The ET2 doing a substantial amount of damage to anyone who pushes across. Both guild members losing their shields. And with that, it'll be another team to finish the job on Anas there, who falls to Eclipse. More damage done either way as the rotations come back around. And ETQ doing so, so much damage with this golden rifle right now. Every single player trying to move across is taking damage left, right, and center. And there it is. I was proven wrong. Storm Surge comes through. Downson and Co. Miles above that Storm Surge threshold. But nonetheless, they still keep fighting. They're here for combat. They're here for damage. They're here for kills. Again, already seven kills on them. So really, really good stuff so far. And elsewhere, we've got Vitality Nikov able to be shots down so for the time being Downson and co they might have a very strong push ahead and with that nikov he's eliminated yeah absolutely 43 players inside this zone as it continues to move to its final destination of course at this point it really could go anywhere and you've got to pick your place carefully but it will decrease in size it will force people closer together and as you mentioned that storm surge could cause problems. You know, I don't think it'll eliminate all too many people, but I do believe that it will do some serious damage to some right now as we've got 53 seconds until the storm line shrinks. And in fact, I think it's the 30 players, not 40. And that means that 10 people are going to have to lose their life before this storm surge starts to come on in. And well, if you haven't already lost those five players needed, then you best believe that the Storm Surge is going to help you in that process. As more players are going to drop, Flick going to find a couple of kills from Guild, of course. As Kappa going to fall to Demon. And at the same time, pressure, excuse me, being applied. ETQ once again taking this height. Monumental damage being dished out left, right, and center. As he's able to find himself a quick kill. Flick actually finding another one. As it's Hellfire that drops. And now it's Boyer to pick up the pieces. Eclipse going to find one onto Light. And with that... We're going to drop to our final 27. Still, the zone continues to engulf those outside. And you've got to make your way on through to this new zone. As you've got one second until it moves once again. It's the 8th storm. You've got 45 seconds to move. And you best believe you've got to get moving quick. Because it is going to cost you a fair bit if you can't get the rotation done properly. Because the healing means everything. And I'm looking at ETQ's health right now. He has everything in the locker. And especially the aim and the accuracy. As he's able to find Noah, dropping him completely. That's a huge kill to be found. He's going to continue to apply that pressure. This height uncontested. As he finds another headshot, it's a dink. He's actually going to find the finish as well on Sifanagin. And now, this is where things get terrifying. 17 players within the server. This Golden Rifle is doing so much work right now. And for, pe for people like Zorni, excuse me, you have no opportunity to try and outbuild the DPM that this weapon just outputs to everyone. And there you go. Another knock. This time it was from down. But fortunately for them, it'll be another kill in their tally as we head into our final 13. And yeah, the final 13. We've got seven trios left here in the server. And it's just death from above right now. ETQ, Downs, and Pablo Wingo, they're up on the high ground and they are unrelentless with the pressure that they are putting on the builds below just spam 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 and as fire hunter on the right ear screen will hit a nice tack shotgun shot as he tries to edit on through and find maybe something hyphen in front of him can he hit the shot through the build he gets the wall and he misses a few shots here he needs to get the kill and he indeed will he will get the knock I believe Onyx Wings picking up one as well. The RPG now down is taking a lot of health away from Onyx Wings. Train H Alpha is going to pick up that one. And he is going to finish him as well. We've got four trios left. And ETQ, Downs and Pablo Wingo. They're still up on the high ground. They are still applying pressure down below. As now, ETQ, he's looking for a little bit of an opening. Train H Alpha is going to go down. And it's Downs that takes him down in the storm. As this trio, they're looking unstoppable for the time being. Fire Hunter is going to be taken down as well. Kinsel trying to find something. Jumps up behind Pablo Wingo, but Downs, he finds another. He will knock him. He's down in the storm. He will be getting the refresh from him as well. He will go down, and now it's all going to be left onto Deceptos, who is in the storm. He does have floppers, but it's going to come down to a heal-off, and I don't know which way it is going to go because he has plenty of splashes as well. He just keeps running deeper and deeper into the zone, so nobody can find him. Going to use the five splashes when he can. And now, it looks like he's going to outheal them for the time being. ETQ is going looking for him, realizing that they could be in a little bit of trouble. He's now emoting. Now, see what happens. Who's going to go down? It's going to be ETQ, and it's going to be Gold Deceptos that picks up the victory for Kinsel and Wacky. The heal-off 
goes in their favor a seven kill victory and that is going to be it for game number two absolutely great great stuff and credit where credit is due to that team for able to just win that heal off to be prepared enough to have the foresight that it would go down to that again a uh, situation that did not look winnable however they were able to make the best of it to adapt and overcome of course we've got our intel moments coming up and ryan why don't you show us what for yeah, absolutely well, i mean this game it couldn't have been more intense that final heal off meant everything and i'm hoping we see the uh the winning pov the amount of healing that that man had in his pockets was unbelievable but you see fire hunter here he's able to pick up a quick kill in fact up to four at this point in time and he's trying to gonna res his teammate here one minute and 30 until it closes in so he knows he's got plenty of time to stick it and he does so an etq he had every opportunity look six chug splashes he tried to play this perfectly to his every advantage he continued to apply pressure from above continued to try and aggress but at this point in time he moved with the storm as best as he could it put him in the storm and at this point he knew well you have to you have to go to a heal off you have to try and use the chuck splashes where possible unfortunately he didn't have the healing and he didn't have the level of healing that Eclipsus had and by then etq realizes this is in it for me i'm out of heals I've got to go and push towards the enemy. And by then, it was all said and done. It was over. And just like that, the Kipsos and his team were able to pick up the Victory Royale. Very well played to them. And that's going to definitely propel them in the scoreboard as we see on screen right now. Gamma Thomas, of course, and his team up in first place. But the Kipsos sneaking into second. We were talking about how important these Victory Royales are. And that proves to you exactly how much they mean. To jump from a place, I don't even think they were top 10 after the first game, to get into a position like that now is a monumental standpoint for them. And so they'll definitely have to keep it up, but in great contention for that top spot. And as we continue to go down the scoreboard, the points decrease quite heavily. I mean, you know, the difference between 10th and 1st right now, I'm looking, is quite literally around 90 points. In fact, about 70 actually. But it's still a monumental amount of victory royale. The difference between 10th and 1st right now, ladies and gentlemen. It is proving to be that that top 5 is in hot contention. You're seeing on the flip side, the bottom end of the scoreboard. There are teams yet to pick up points. But of course, we've still got 3 more games ahead of us. We've still got plenty of action coming up. So don't go anywhere. We're going to go to a quick commercial. But we'll be back with Game 3 very, very shortly.
Hello, 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 and welcome to the third game of the finals of the Razor Invitational Europe. We have got the action straight underway as well. It's a fairly sparse placement of all these teams. However, the Coliseum and these houses are going to be somewhat, somewhat populated for the time being. Let's see what happens around the map and let's see how they fare. And for the most part, we have got a very quick few eliminations on our hand. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're going to expect a lot of early fights. I'm looking at Holly Hedges. That is absolutely crammed at the same time. I'm looking towards the north side of the map here at Misty Meadows. Two teams on the opposite sides. They'll be looking to try and fight each other at a later stage. But for the time being, everyone is going to be content with looting. In fact, Vino has just been dropped by down. And with that, we're down to 98 players. Our first death of the day in the form of ETQ and downs, of course. They are looking quite good right now. As Holly Hedges, we mentioned it was going to be packed full of people. And damn it is, as there's three different teams here already. And it'll be looking like everyone is going to be hunting for more. Chuck Splash is going to be used. They are going to get everyone up in the HP department, in the shield department. Everyone seems to be quite ready here. Everyone seems to be alert and ready to go. And in fact, this team, I think they've got enough loot between them. I think they're just going to remove themselves from the area, remove themselves from the threat. And they're going to move away. And I do not blame them whatsoever. Points mean everything. And if they have to disengage and get no kills for the next 15 minutes, then so be it. They'll do it. Because if they can get a victory out of it, they know it's paramount to the three or four kills they'd find here. Yeah, now we have a look at players just, you know, farming up for the time being. A snipe shot coming in there from ETQ. Unlucky, maybe, not to pick up the victory in that last game. But, nevertheless, they will try and do it here. They've already picked up one kill altogether. A lot of players landing towards Holly Hedges. Trixie is going to be knocked by Demon Archer. Uh, now, knife shot coming in, ETQ. Trying to predict it, but he won't be able to hit it. Rifle getting a knock and getting a full kill. It's going to be Nakamana Ghosty that goes down. Lufu is going to be knocked as well, as well as Scalar. We're going to jump into the POV as Splash, who is just executed. One of his enemies, it is going to be Scalar that goes down. Karlik, Wolfie, and Splash, though. They are now in a fight, as I believe. They're going to try and refrag if they can. But for the time being, Karlik is just boxed up, having a look above and making sure that nobody is building up. That all now down below has been spotted out. As now the shots will ring on through. Gendaway is going to be eliminated up in the top left hand corner in your screen. And Toha is appearing. Pircolino, should I say, will fall soon after that trio again. The curse of the third day, they are having a really rough go of it in the last two tournaments when they make it to finals. As now Carla trying to edit in, takes a wall. As now he edits a player down and he hits the shot, and that is insane. The edits, the shot, absolutely ridiculous, but he's going to be pushed and he's going to be refagged. As now that all will take him down. His teammate has been knocked. Now he might be pressurized by the remaining two players at that trio but for the time being we're gonna switch it over we're gonna have a look at cookie in salty towers and they're not really up to much just farming up mats there is a team close by but no engagement happening thus far that uh, and you said it perfectly we got 500 and co making his way up towards this position here and there is going to be a player to watch out for however it's like the rest of the squad isn't there it's going to be a lone wolf so to say as he will, look, there's a cower. That's Shady and Co. He's hiding on that corner. He's spotted out by Firehunter, and I suspect he may be due a bit of early damage. Cookie as well, losing most of his shields as he tries to make his way across. And as Firehunter, his team will start crossing from building to building, looking to rain down Hellfire onto this side, onto anyone who dare cross their paths. And it does take a bit of early damage as well as Birch will be spammed on down. Firehunter trying to catch him out. He's able to remove shields, but. HB hasn't been encroached on just yet. Again, he's going to do on damage. Shady will join him as damage is done either way. And Shady also losing his shields, but the health remains unscathed, at least for the time being. Absolutely, the hype that Fire Hunter has right now. This is two games in a row where we've witnessed this heavy assault rifle punish so many people with this hype. We saw last game 
you know, the damage that it did, the legendary assault rifle, or the, rifle, the legendary heavy rifle, it was paramount to everyone else, no matter what they threw at them, and Firehunter showed us again, I think he did around 150 damage alone in this fight with that heavy AR, he has been tagged up and instead does decide to take the close range action with the lever shotgun, but we're going to look into Cookie's POV right now in Salty Towers, he's going to chuck those minis on down to help his teammate out, and Shady and Co, well, they've got the height, they've got every opportunity and they're going to continue to just hold this for the greater good. They spot people off in the distance. Don't particularly want to go all too aggressive as Cookie will now be looking for something. Just going to fire off a couple of shots. Try and just let everybody know I exist. I'm here. I'm ready for a fight. And it's a very, very interesting move to make. You know, taking a fight early on can be detrimental to that of your uh, of your of your positioning of course because if you lose out on a very important time uh, important fight you lose your life you're out of the out of the game and it could be that you're out of the tournament completely in that you won't make top five and i've seen a, a fair few people ask in chat over the uh, the last couple of minutes or so how to register the sixth and final tournament is coming up next thursday you can sign up at the website using razorinvitational.com but hold your sign up because you've got to spectate Birch. He's just domed someone. Clean headshot. Drop to the floor. Cursed is no more. And now the rest of the squad have to fire on through. They're going to try and push on forward. He spots out a second man. Knows that he's there. Fires. Misses. But it doesn't matter. He's already done the damage. He's already provided the goods. And his team, well, they'll find themselves five points. And that has got to be the shot of the day so far. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. That snipe absolutely insane and i said it before you know i said it, i believe in the first game the sniper shots that we've seen over these last two and now three days they've been absolutely ridiculous as now mental mike he's been put under a little bit of pressure here as now he's been tagged down to 57 he's a mini that he's just going to throw down to the ground he realized that his time was numbered and he is going to be taken away atrios have been eliminated all in all for the time being air moon has only picked up one but one it's better than none i suppose so an extra five points for them along the way and i believe there are a few teams close by that they could take an engagement with now if they really really want to Lewis gonna knock boyer and not hellfire as well as we will lose two more players and it is indeed boar and not hellfire going down as well and now you know, there isn't going to be much. The fight has already happened. Everybody's just going to, you know, break these builds, see what loot they can muster after that exchange. Lewick will take down Clusia as well. Another kill, and I believe another trio taken care of, taken down. Uh, it's 25 seconds until the first zone reaches its destination. And, you know, we could see a lot of teams, you know, rotate in towards this Weeping Woods. And maybe, possibly, see uh, a bit of a hectic, you know, second zone. Again, just getting some loot. Oh, man, I just see in the chat there, Jonku just wiped an entire squad. So credit, uh, credit's you to him. I believe he just wiped an entire squad single handedly. That or his teammates just didn't get the final blows on them. But for the time being, that storm was slowly shrinking on in. And to be honest, uh, Agro, Agro Win and Co, they've been looting this team they've just finished fighting, but there is another team nearby. And they're going to, well, end up on the low ground now as this team could look to just fight them the second they move on out. Seems to be very, very careful for the time being. And, well, Rahl and, and Co will have to try and make their way out into cover and into a better position whilst being under fire if they're not careful here. Yeah, absolutely. 66 out of 99. I feel like this game has sped up in pace a fair bit. We've really lost a third of the lobby within the first two zones. And I think something to highlight is that at this stage we were at the fifth or sixth zone last game so most certainly a lot more people getting dropped left right and center as another fight breaks out to of course the western side of weeping woods it's aggro and his team that are looking to try and put the pressure on to etq and his team but fortunately enough they are able to just simply fall on back they don't want to aggress all too much they are playing for placements the all important factor as well is that they can keep the consistency of their placements up to make sure they make it, or at least attempt to make it, into the top five for those prizes. But for the time being, 65 players in the server. Everyone seems quite content on their positions right now. Admittedly, some much better than others. But it is most certainly looking quite good for the time being. Dorak 
just knocked himself, and I think he had just fell to his death. That's unfortunate to have on the final day, but in other news, another player has been lost from the server, and that leaves us with 63. That means just under two-thirds of our lobby still remain. We are losing players like nothing today, and I think that's quite an alarming factor. Yeah, I know. Like, people are absolutely going crazy here in this one because, you know, this is, I believe, the quickest game we've had so far. And it's only to be expected, of course. We're in the third game now, so you will see players, you know, get that little bit more desperate, that little bit more mad to pick up a few kills, to rack up a few points, you know, add to their tally, get up towards the top of that leaderboard as Onyx Wings will take down another player. And now, you know... For the time being, everybody is kind of spread out, so we won't see too much going on. Heralol is going to be knocked. It is going to be Jojo that picks up that one and actually picks up the kill as well just before he is knocked himself. This team, Ermon, Marlinex, and Agrowin, they have only picked up one kill between them, and they're just going to be into just farm up mats here. For the time being, I don't believe Storm Surge will be coming into the equation because I do actually expect to lose at least nine more players in the next few moments, in the next few zones, uh, because just everybody wants to get aggressive, everybody wants to get points, everybody wants to get up on top of the leaderboard. Of course, this is final day of the Razor Invitational Europe, and you know. You want to be up there in the top five. You want to be winning those at prize pools. You don't want your weekend pretty much to be not wasted, but, you know, for nothing. You know, you, you really want to go away with something and everybody is battling it out here. Nobody wants to lose. It is very, very competitive out here. And it could just heat up now as Maryland is close to a team, I believe. And needs to be careful that he is not pushed by the team on his left and it's, they begin to move into that compound that he is just in spots a few more teams as well but he might just run into a little bit of trouble if he goes around this wall it looks like he won't he is going to fire off a few shots he's going to tag up one but he's going to get shot in the back and this is the team that i told him told us to worry about he is in a little bit of trouble here as no pressure is going to be applied his teammates have come out of the building and have decided to build him back in they are going to group up together. They are going to try and survive for the time being. But for now, seems like it's going to go a little bit quiet. I don't think that team are going to push. I think they're going to leave them alone. That uh, blue team, they're just going to stay where they are. They're not going to push Ermon and Co. They're going to let them just farm up. They're going to let them sit there and realizing that they do have to rotate themselves into this third zone. Still to highlight as well, this third zone is a way away from these players. They're going to have to take a... Well, they're going to have to lob quite a way to try and well get to this position. They've got two other squads with them. And, well, the issue is no squad wants to move first because they'll be shot on the back. But they need to move quickly. Otherwise, they're just going to be taken out regardless from the zone. So it is going to come down to timing. Timing will be everything in this scenario. And for the time being, we look at how much they just focus on farming materials because they know how much cover is going to mean luckily they do have a car to use so that might be a kind of breath of fresh air or maybe a nice signing for them cookie he'll appear from behind them just as they try to walk away and well as they speed off into the distance they quickly flip the car lose their license in the process and well hopefully they'll be able to just drive on off yeah, absolutely. You're looking right now five seconds until this third zone continues to move on in. We see off in the distance, Savid and his team still alive. And arguably, they're a hot contender to win this one, I do believe. I was saying, you know, it could go anyone's way. And quite honestly, I still stick to my thought that it really could go anyone's way. But Savid and their trio, they've really turned up in this day. You know, today has been a great day for them. They managed to find themselves at the end of the first game, I do believe, in first place or second place, excuse me. And in fact, it is just from there on out, they're able to just try and topple the scoreboards. Right now for them, I mean, is it looking too great? They are in 16th place, 62 points. But of course, as game three goes on, what's to say that they can't find themselves more points? They took an early exit in game two, quite literally 28th place, zero points. But they could actually find it today. And Agro's got the uh, the map the size of the world right now, apparently. But he is actually... Gonna, rather, someone's gotten dropped. It's Ermoon that gets dropped. Marlon going to try and help his teammate out as much as possible. But the span continues 
And for the time being, I think his teammate is a lost cause. He'll be dropped down low HP. And I think he'll be left to bleed out to death. Marlon and Agro, they're reduced to just two as the rest of the squad are scratching their heads and wondering why and what on earth just happened. Uh, yeah, you know, a good knock there, a good kill if you are indeed the team that picked it up. Marlon now being put under a little bit of pressure. He's going to have to back away. He's going to try and get his hands on the loot of his teammate, but he can't get it done. He's going to have to pop these minis at least before he goes back in to have a look. There's a pepper on the ground that he can pick up as well. But for now, the loot is unreachable. Hyphen, Noah and McConey. We've seen a lot of these towards final state, towards, you know, the later stages of the game. But now they are just going to begin their long rotate. They have a good distance to go. Jacob is going to be knocked there, I believe, and actually might be taken down. As now he's actually going to be rezzed, I think, and healed up. No, oh, it's not too bad for him. I thought maybe that would have been one more person gone. He is now he up to around 150. McConey just keeping an eye, making sure nobody is going to peek him from the box because that could be absolutely disastrous. You definitely do not want to be caught out in the open. But McConey, he's been given pretty much a free rotation here, which is exactly what you want in these zones. You know, you want everybody else to be focused on, you know, other things, rotating themselves or indeed other players. If your trio can get a free rotate, happy days, especially if you don't have to waste any bills or anything like that. As now, McConey will group up with his teammates. And they are happy enough in the zone. Goku. Looking now down below through the build. Trying to get the res off. But they're going to be pushed here. Can he hit the shots? He actually gets the knock on to Koku. Continues to build out for the time being. He is going to be eliminated and taken down. As Koku, he thought, you know, maybe this is a good idea. Maybe, you know, I can push this team that are going for the res. And he got taken down. He's after losing his life because of it. And that could be absolutely disastrous for his team. As now we see a Storm Surge warning this trio. Don't have to worry about it. They are well and truly above it. Almost 2,000 damage above it. The zone is continuing to move on in. But it, so it will push Hera, Joku and Denny towards the circle. And they will begin to rotate in. Hoping that they don't get focused in the time being. Dusek is going to be knock Relvis. Will take him down. Denny now being focused a little bit. Going to need to edit on through his teammates built and begin to push into the zone now turns his ten attention to behind him kappa c is just gonna run above them but i think he will be safe for the time being now this trio they're in a little bit of trouble they're 52 below the damage threshold so they will need to apply a little bit of pressure onto teams as hyphen looks down through the boxes and might spot out a random user he hits a shot but he's still well and truly below that damage threshold. Needs to actually maybe pick up a kill here in order to be safe. Because once this storage, sur uh, storage surge becomes active, should I say, they will be in plenty of trouble. Cool comes on through. Now we look over to Hera. Hera does not have to worry about it at all. He is ready to just wreak havoc on anyone who dare come his way. Again, early quick kill there with the assistance of Denny. And to highlight, this team already on seven kills. So really, really good stuff from them so far. Right now, they only need to focus on placement. Bear in mind, there are still 19 teams left. With this zone moving on in, it's only really till the sixth, seventh zone when we really see kind of a mass exodus of teams from this game. So for the time being, they're going to sit back. They're going to hold for, the t for a moment at least. And try to just chip away at shields and try to rotate their way back around to an easier spot to fight from. Absolutely, majority of these teams just going to try and use this time to rotate on through. Try not to burn through as many materials as possible. They just want to achieve the end goal of getting towards this smaller circle. Being in with a chance of trying to win this game. Wow, big shots from Joku. Huge damage dealt and that's going to force the people on his left to turn their attention to healing rather than the aggression. And that's given a perfect opportunity for them to just simply rotate on in. They'll do so comfortably. Get on into the box. They're more than happy with their position right now. And I do not blame them. They're looking great right now. As we head into the halfway mark. 49 players. 18 teams. Things are about to spice up before the heat comes on. Remember your opportunity to join the Razor Viper Mouse giveaway by dropping exclamation mark ticket is still in full swing. This is the third game of five after the fifth game. We'll be announcing who the winner of the giveaway is and that therefore will allow someone to walk away from this stream with an awesome new mouse. And of course, that's not all. You can head over to RazorInvitational.com and from there, there's a $1,000 worth of giveaway prizes there. All sorts 
from, of course, our sponsors, Pringles, Intel, Seagate, and, of course, Razor. So, everything up for grabs right now. You can go and check that out and get yourself entered into those giveaways as well. But for the time being, everyone seems to be very, very content with how they're going to move towards this next zone. Still, plenty of players on the server. Everyone seems to be quite happy with their position. It's just about when the next engagement is going to blast. And it might just be now, as it's Hera that spots the players behind here on top of the bridge. Joker actually going to get on out, but fortunately... Using the crystal going to be able to get back in. And now it's just going to look to try and get on through towards this new zone. And box up patiently waiting for him to make his move on forward. Players below, players to the left, players all around. It's just a matter about surviving. Yeah, it's just a matter of staying alive here now for the time being. 15 trios left in the server as... Hyphen now is going to begin to rotate on in. Onyx Zani is going to be knocked. It's going to be Flames Swasti that picks up that one. As Noah is going to be eliminated for Hyphen and his trio. He uses a bounce pad to get in front of this trio. As now there is somebody on the same level. He needs to maybe think about building up and getting off this level to a maybe more advantageous height. Hera has been knocked down. Harvey is going to fall as well. There's two players down in this box. It is going to be Miro that is going to be res. The elimination is going to come in. He is going to be taken down. We have a little over two thirds, or sorry, excuse me, one third of the server left as Storm Surge becomes active. Players going down left, right and center is Nikov is going to fall. Daddy Bird to be put under a little bit of pressure here. I believe the knock was picked up. Deceptos taking it down. Denny, the Shady, Cookie and Birch now are going to be in their rotation into the zone. We are, of course, in the seventh zone here. They're going to drop down a level just to try and stay alive. Flame Swasty popping off, taking down Kinsel and Wacky. We are down to nine trios as now Cookie going for a shot with that charge shotgun. Won't be able to find anything just yet. Anis has gone down in the storm as now Cookie sets his sights on Savid who is below his build. Can't get the shot off though is now he has plenty of mats down there if he wants to jump down onto Swasti's body and pick up that shady he has been knocked in the time being though Thomas picks up another knock onto McConey and will get the kill as well as now eight trios remain 18 players are left in the server Peter it's getting crazy in here and a bit of a lull these teams moving on in eight teams left standing Contact pretty much ringing out constantly from every single team. Of course, we look over at this team. Birch having lost Shady from that. So with only two players left to try and ring out damage wherever possible again. Two shots ring out either way. All these players having to back on through. Having to wait for these players to come into them. Guess I like able to shut down Hive. But Rifler will fall. One of Safer's members going down. Safer now progressing up forward. Able to take down Cookie as well. Another light shot. Again, wary of his team. Playing for the low ground. Ready for people to jump down on him. Nothing happening so far though. As with the eye shrinking, yes, again, we've got six teams left now. It's contact ring all around the board. Six, he's been down. Save it, looking to get him up in time, though. Just inkling towards the zone as he'll try to get him up. But unfortunately, I suspect he may have been a bit too slow there. Six full, save it. The last man left standing now as he finds himself in a one versus, well, I mean, eight now at this point. With four other teams there to worry about. ETQ as well, trying to get his way through the zone, trying to catch out these members, picking up the floor oh, of every can, but it won't matter because he's down nonetheless. And as he is down, it will be down to Downson. Again, working his way up, trying to catch out early members, save it, exchanging blows with him, save it, able to shut him down now. As go high like Zara, he tried to rain on death from above. Two squads left, and just like that, he'll finish the job and he'll bring his team a victory royale. I said that saving opportunity was huge. He managed to squeeze a second place out of a near impossible scenario. So very well played to him. And of course, that's going to propel him and his team up the scoreboard. Very well played to him. I felt bad for ETQ though. The floppers in his hands. He was midway through eating them and then got put to zero HP. Not dropped to the floor. And we're already going to jump into the late game. We see right now Daddy Birch. I mean, he was a top contender. He had a great opportunity here to try and pick up a couple of kills. He was able to... At least assist his teammates in finding one. Fell on down. Lovely shot. In fact, I think he found the kill onto Rifler. And then, of course, Savid and Slicks, the last two men remaining. Savid just going to find this kill here. ETQ, this is what I was on about so close. About half a second more. And he'd have lived to tell the tale. But down, being the last man left, he was able to try and find the shot onto Savid. But unfortunately, he was taken down by Gohai like Zara. And it would be Demon. That finds the last. That delivers them the victory royale. And you look at the scoreboard right now. 
It downs ETQ and Pablo Wingu at second place, but of course, our first place contenders Flick, Anas, and Gamma Thomas in first. The Kipsos and his trio in third. Dark Zara and Freddy, of course, are winners of game three in fourth. You see Light there, Fire Hunter, and Onyx Wings in fifth. And it continues to go on down that list. I'm looking around right now trying to find Savid. Maybe I'm blind. In fact, he's seventh place. A jump from where I see. I started my leaderboard at the end of last game. And he was ranked in around the 15 area, it looks. So a huge rise for him. Uh, an amazing game, in fact. He was placed 16th at the end of last game. And so to jump up to where he is now, who says he can't win it? It's all up for grabs. And of course, we still got two more games after this. Yeah, just like you said, that is game number three. We do indeed have two more games coming up. We have the penultimate game coming up next. The action is going to be here.
Hello, hello, and welcome to game four of the Razor Invitational Europe. It is finals day, and uh, without further ado, we're going to go into what will be a very, very quick drop from Onyx Wings and Fire Hunter. Both uh, him and what well, looks like the rest of his team are all going to be heading on forward, looking to get for this early drop towards the Coliseum, maybe making their way towards the docks. But for the time being, it's fairly sparse, uh, sparse spacing from a lot of these members as we await to see just what they have in store for us. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to be looking at the map right now already. We've lost a trio. Maybe, I'm not too sure. I oh, know it wasn't. Someone just didn't get to connect this game, as it is Mental Michael that's actually just picked up two quick knocks. That's a huge start for him. And in fact, he's just finished one of them. And I think he's just found the full three. In fact, Leo just picked himself up Cookie as well. He's been beamed in the process, however, and he's going to drop to the floor, firing off... A sniper shot missed opportunity and now he's forced to go for the res on his teammate Amigo on top for the time being though already a fair few players drop in from the serve we've already lost our first team things are just kicking off and we've already losing so many players ETQ's just picked up saving in his team that's a huge L for them and that's going to be unfortunate as they will be swiftly eliminated from game 4 meaning that game 5 is all about the comeback for them but for ETQ He's been a star performer today. Yeah, he's really, really impressed me. And to be honest, they're kind of a dark horse, that, that trio, you know. I didn't really expect them to do too much, but they've been really, really impressive. They've hit some insane shots. And, you know, they've actually come out on top in most of their exchanges as they have now taken down one of the big trios, you know. And now we're just going to see Birch, Cookie, and Shady. They're just going to save our... They are just going to uh, farm up. They are just going to wait and see what they can find. You know, they have to rotate quite a while. They are just going to loot up these fishing holes if they can. We've already lost two trios, and we could be about to lose a third as Misty Meadows. There are a few teams here. Bubka, Daddle, and Scalar. They are one of the trios involved. As now they have a look down below and might spot Wolfie and his trio who are going to continue to move on in as he's splashed there as well. And Karlik looking for a snipe if he can. But Bobak, he is going to miss his. As now, we wait and see one, or should I say two minutes left until the storm starts moving. I believe it was a player knocked there, if I'm not mistaken. The splash taking a lot of damage. Daddle with a nice shot, putting a wall in front of him as well. As now Wolfie tries to bounce pad up to get above his teammate, but Daddle has come behind him. He's hit two nice shots with that blue tack. He's going to drop on down as pressure begins to apply. He's shot in the back. He's sent a 4 HP. He needs to get out of there because he has little to no health. Worst ways is going to be knocked in the time being. Daddle now farming up mats as he only has one build, so he is in a little bit of trouble in that regard. Wyas is going to be fully eliminated as well. Scaler. And we drop on down, maybe to help his teammate. Vortexia is going to be taken care of as well. Now, you know, there are players above Wolfie that he can go and look for, but we are going to jump into Lazy Lake action. Tohaj, Pircolino, and Gendoe. They are going to be looking to see if they can have a better showing than the last few games, because, you know, they've been knocked out very early on in almost all three games and they'll be looking for something different this one Gendoe has already picked up a kill Toha has been put under a little bit of pressure and he's going to be knocked Pircolino might be able to find one breaking in the bills whips is so Ooh. low but he hits the shotgun he will take him down it's all going to be left on Gendoe dropping down to the low ground trying to put the pressure on to Leo the crack but he's been shotgunned by whips he's gone down to just 100 health he has two shield I believe he does have the HP advantage but not the numbers advantage as he's now in a uh, one versus two I believe as Tohaj he is still alive for the time being so there's going to be no siphon and he is still alive as now Leo the Crap and Whips they're going to begin to heal up going for an edit trying to hit a shot if he can Gendaway focusing why is it trying to take down that very low HP player he hits him once but he needs to hit him for a little bit more he's on 170 HP as he tries to get up close and personally he will get a knock that is absolutely huge as now he hits an 80 shotgun shot as well he continues to spam he takes down all three and he might be able to get the res onto Tohaj if possible but I believe there's another team lurking skulking about the place and might 
be able to take him down when he is very weakened. Well, every other game we've had has started fairly slowly, but for now it seems to be contact and aggressive plays from the get-go. Jonku trying to get up close to Burstall. He's got fish to try and catch out. Again, he's wary of his teammates of Vertex, though. And with that, Jonku is actually just going to box himself in. It'll take a moment to reload. Yeah, a moment to re-encroach onto this member. A nice early shotgun blast onto Vertex. However, he's forfeited the altitude differential. And with that, he's now going to have to work his way up from the low ground. He's got teammates to try and push on Hera, up of Hera. And with that, it will allow them to try and get to high ground and maintain it for the time being, at least, as these other teams go into a position where they're potentially about to be third partied. Yeah, right now, it seems to be that the safety of every player is paramount. Getting to these sort of uh, stages within the game, everyone is just looking to try and make their mark, trying to get more points, trying to push themselves further and further up that scoreboard. And for the majority of these teams, it's all about playing smart, playing together. And just holding on. Oh, Joku, that's huge damage dealt. And with that, he's going to start to get a press. Shot's going to rattle out. Fortunately, he is able to disengage, but he took more damage than he should have. And in fact, Jandari has just rezzed his teammate, luckily as well. But I think he might just get spammed out. Tohash looking to try and make things work. But Jandari, nice first shot to open things up. But he's getting pierced from above. And now he's got to be careful because Joku on the hunt as well. And this team, I think, might just be done for. I don't think it was. In fact, Tohash has stayed alive from this res. And that has allowed that him and his team, they might be able to find their way back in. Tohash going to take big damage, in fact, down to low HP. And Joku knows this. Going to continue to oppress, continue to fire shots on through. Tohash dropped. But Joku still in a bit of a pickle. He's got to fight the players to his right. He's getting shot from above as well. And this fight will not stop. Percolino dropped Joku to fall. And they continue to fight. Error dropped to the floor as well as Jendawi falling on back. Trying to laser one. But missed shot. Missed opportunity. And now he has to run. The lonely man on a mission. Because he's the last man left in his team. And that was an absolute Bloodbath across the board. Denny knows as well that his time might just be imminent as well within the game four. As right now, he hears the heals. He hears everything. He's got no opportunity. Fires a shot. Green tack connects. Connects once more, but it will be no match to the charge shotguns of that on his opposing side. He'll be gunned down and eliminated. Of course, it was the sec from Vertex to find the kill. And finally... The map goes silent. That was unbelievable. Absolutely ridiculous. The engagement there. We're down to two thirds of the lobby already. And you know, we talked about how this has been the second last game. It's going to be a little bit more hectic because people, you know, realizing if they are down towards that bottom of the leaderboard, they're going to have to have a last, you know, their final two games. They're going to have to be big ones. So people are going to just play for kills. The W key and the griefing, you know, people will continue to do that and try and take down players early on as now Sony will begin to apply pressure onto Jachu I believe Mappy is there as well trying to get him Mappy actually will get the knock on him and will take him down as Mobs up on the hill doing a little bit of damage when he can looking for a snipe trying to take down Onyx Sony won't be able to hit it though as now Sony will begin to get on over they will pick up a player on their back and they will eliminate him as now we lose one more player emote in on him i don't know if you have time for that especially if you are towards the bottom of the leaderboard i think you'd want to get a move on you'd want to try and pick up as many kills as possible but you know the bm might be a little bit necessary now onyxani and co they're going to begin to move on out they're actually going to move away from this fight which could be smart because there are at least three teams here Mobs now applying a little bit of pressure if he can, trying to find a shot through the builds, realizing that there's a player above him, decides to box up. Now Boyer editing on down to his teammate. Moab's going up on top of the height. Maybe to try and find someone below. Just breaking walls, taking them, spraying them now, seeing if he can find someone down below. Managing to take a wall, but can't spot anyone. They are gonna back away. For now, they're being put under a little bit of pressure. They are just going to try and get out of there if they can. Mobs just putting unrelenting pressure on this team, team below. Trying to grab the floors or ceilings above them. But for now, 
It's a little bit of a stalemate. They're just boxing away from each other. They're just wasting as many mats as possible. Boyer hits a nice shot there. Hits the second. Hits all three shotgun shots. Gets the knock. Needs to be careful though. The elimination will come in. He catches on his wings in the side. And he will find another knock as well. He could find Firehunter if he's lucky as well. Spam through the bills. We'll tag him down to around 33 HP. Won't get the kill on him just yet. Firehunter is still alive by the skin of his teeth. As now... We get a little bit of a lull. It's a little bit of a calm now. Mons will find him and he will take him down. That's another trio eliminated. His case like is trying to find something. Mobs realizing the imminent danger. He's going to have to back away. He's going to have to box up. He's going to heal up. And we have a little bit of quiet in this madness. Absolutely. We enter that lull where every team gets set up. Every team gets ready to push on ahead. And for the time being, as they all line up outside this zone, they try to get into the most advantageous position they can. But Aspect is going to take a bit of early damage trying to retreat away. Again, over in the skill feed, Anas is able to shut down 70th Marvel open. With Shady to respond onto the Vertex side and co. But now Aspect is caught out in his box. is going to try and fight his way out. However, already being a man down, he's definitely going to be in a very, very difficult position. Trying to make his way in. Tries to react a few shots. Let him do so as his teammate or opponent, sorry, will edit to go up high and over. Aspect, minimal amount of HP before he's shut on down. His teammate finds it, but it won't matter. Mobs falls as well. And just like that, the team gets eliminated. We fall to 16 teams left. And with 45 players left standing, it's going to be a swift little rotation into this zone before they can move on forward. Absolutely. Things are kicking off right now. 45 players and we're yet to see the second zone form. People are really pushing for their victories. They're pushing for kills. They're pushing for everything right now. As things fall a little bit silent, this is expected. We know that there's a time in the map in which, or rather in the server, that everyone falls a little bit quiet for each other. And right now, Jamside caught in a bit of a problem. Editing to people out left, right, and center. But swarmed by three. It's done big damage. But hook up there with the kill. It is Jamside that falls. And now, they are fortunate enough to find themselves with many men up. And now it's all about their timing, all about their presence as they've made their way into the second zone. More shots ringing on out. Cyrox is able to pick up yet another knock. And in fact, it will be finished off by his teammate, Michael. He'll pop minis and two bigs. Everything's looking upwards for this side. Yeah, it's not looking too bad. You know, five kills. Mental Michael going a little bit mental, taking everyone down. Uh, you know, picking up five kills early on in game number four. Firehunter is going to be knocked. Case Light and Airmon as well. Case Light picking up a knock before he goes down. Firehunter and Case Light are going to be taken down. Onyx Wings is going to fall soon after. So I believe that is another trio gone, if I am not mistaken. 15 trios now remain. 40 players left in the server. And this is the fastest, you know, game we've had today. 40 players left in the third zone. Hasn't even started moving yet. So you see the spread out of players. Teams fighting in the storm still. As now, you know, we see a little bit of engagement. I can only imagine it is towards Craggy Cliffs. As now, Wakey, Deceptos, and Kinsel. I believe they won game two, if I'm not mistaken. The heel off, it came down to Deceptos coming out on top. They are going to begin to rotate in, use the water to their advantage, get a nice spot. They do have a place marked, indeed two places marked. They will make up their mind what piece of land they want to build on. As for now... It's a little bit quiet towards this side of the map. We have lost another trio, I believe. We are down to 14. As now, Scalar, Daddle, and Bubak might just get into this car and try and drive on away. No, they're going to wait. They're going to look into the boxes, try and go for a shot through the build. They won't be able to connect anything. And they will now drive away from that fight, realizing, you know, let's just rotate into the zone. Let's leave those guys there. We don't need to really take that fight. We can just move on out. Nikov is going to find another kill. Capacity uh, is going to be the player that has gone down as well. Dimovic is going to be knocked by Train H Alpha. And he will be eliminated. Noah picking up him as well. We've lost another trio. 35 players left in the server. 12 trios. It is very much going to get a little bit hectic now here, Peter. Without a doubt, and for the time being, it is going to be a swift rotation into this zone, and for the most part, this kind of southerly side of the zone is fairly sparsely populated, so a lot of real estate for you guys to just get on up and to 
look to potentially build up in. Put out Skylar and Co. They find their little box. They find their little position. And now they just wait. Yeah, there's a minute until the zone comes in. Everyone seems to be just rotating into this white zone. Getting up close and personal with it. Finding a little box. And then just awaiting the zone. No one wants to commit to a fight too early on. Look at Skylar again. He's great for guns. But his utility. He's only got six minis with him. He doesn't have anything for health. And that will play to his detriment if he starts to fight over the course of this well, continuously next couple of minutes. And now, well, things are falling very much on the silent side. No one really wants to aggress. They all want to play for the placements. We're 12 teams remaining, which means we are in a point where if a team was to get eliminated, they would get placement points. Fortunately, you know, there will be teams that make it further. Unfortunately for others, their exit will be very soon. And that means they'll get minimal amount of points for this. Of course, every single team that eliminates or gets eliminated at this time is an extra three points added for your placement so, at this point, everyone is going to be quite content with staying alive. They've made it to this stage, so why on earth would they try and risk dying now? Everyone's going to try and move towards this new zone. A minute and 20 until they've got to move. And for this team, Relvis and his teammate, well, they've got a very short distance to travel, but an enemy in very close quarters means that they might have a hard time doing something about that. He is going to look left and right to spot if anyone's around. He spots the edit. He knows that there's a player in the vicinity he doesn't want to really pull the trigger he knows that there's an enemy quite close by and now he spots out okay that's where they are i can edit fires the shot beautiful unreal reactions very well played from relvis punishing that rotation in its entirety but now they've made an enemy and now that might cause a problem in rotation as he looks around wondering what on earth is going on we drop to a round of the third of the lobby remaining 34 players of the original 96 connected 32 teams and marlon he's finding another knock it's nico f or nikov that's found another kill it's marlon that falls and in fact we're down to 33 as etq will make his way around towards this height the question is will he be able to retain it will he stick with the zone and try and push forward with it and try and take the height over everyone else that's the real question now spots the players to his left and now it's all about holding on, playing smart, playing passive, and more importantly, just giving his team any advantage he can heading into these zones. Yeah, you just want you don't want to give away any advantages here. You just want to stay alive. You just want to see, you know, if you can catch somebody rotating, which ETQ might just do now. He ties down Bubik an awful lot and does a lot of damage to Scaler as well. You know, he's already picked up two kills. He's looking to add for that tally. He's hungry for more. Uh, Scaler now is going to be focused. And we talk about it so much. You know, when you get to these zones and somebody starts taking shots at somebody, you know, it just initiates everybody in the lobby to go, hold on a second, there's people fighting over here. We'll turn our attention and we'll just start spamming into these builds. Hopefully we can pick up a kill. And Scaler is, you know, experienced in that. It was all started there by ETQ, ETQ, should I say, hitting those nice shots with the heavy assault rifle. And then other players in the lobby began to focus him. Luckily enough, he has survived. But if you have a look at his HP... I believe in total he has maybe 70, 60. So it's not an awful lot altogether. A snipe coming in there. ETQ won't be able to hit it. As Marlon X is going to be eliminated. Hyphen going to be accredited with that kill. As now 12 trios remain. The fifth zone begins to form. ETQ and his trio. They have to go pretty much max distance. So now. It'll be pretty interesting to see. Can they move on forward? And it looks like they will. They're going to begin their rotation. And they are going to begin to move on out. As now Pablo Wingo, you know, they're pretty much being given a free rotation here. Nobody's really challenging them, which is surprising. I thought maybe Noah and Co. would be putting a little bit of pressure on this team. But no, they're just going to let them build up on top of the height. And they are just going to retain the height. As now, I believe Kinsel has been knocked in a matter of moments that I have been talking now, Pablo Wingo, they're having a look down below to see what they can find. I believe Gamma Thomas picked up that knock over there in that build. Anas will knock Deceptos and he will take him down. Wacky is going to fall as well. Another trio has been eliminated. 12 trios now left in the server. And 45 seconds until the next zone is going to begin to form. 
Yeah, these players making their way in forward. Hyper taking a substantial amount of damage. Two HP left, but by some miracle, we'll get into this little box nonetheless. Surviving by the skin of his teeth as he'll still have himself shot at. And we'll use that bounce pad to get into a bit of a more comfortable position. But again, he's tagged on down. 14 HP remaining, and this time he's out of healing. He does have shields, though, to his credit. But for the most part, what good will that do? Again. To only 11 squads left standing as that zone continues to shrink on in. These teams desperately holding on. ETQ again on the high ground. And ETQ and Downs have had an incredible couple of games so far. We've seen them time and time again getting kill after kill, raining havoc down on anyone below them. And for now, this could be their chance to really start to climb the ranks. Same for Vitality Nikov, who has had a fairly slow start. He missed the first lobby. And this could be his shot at redemption. Yeah, absolutely. And as you look at ETQ's hotbar, once again, he's got that heavy legendary assault rifle. It is an unbelievable damage machine. We've seen him use it time and time again. It has delivered wonders so far. And in fact, I think they've been gifted with the zone once again. They'll be able to move right back on in. They have all the builds. They have every opportunity. It's just another point in which they can connect their height across. They continue to be pressured at least for the time being it's an attempt but it's not going to be a great one pablo wingu he's going to just continue to build across excuse me continuing to try and apply that pressure and give his team every opportunity to win this as he continues to spray on down everyone seems quite content with this rotation still six zones at 30 seconds until it ends and we move to our seventh this game is going to end in the matter of minutes and the question is who will be coming out on top gamma thomas picking up yet another kill etq this legendary assault rifle, I'm telling you, is ringing hell on everyone right now. As he's looking for more heads to shoot. He's looking for more people to connect with. And these bullets, they do tremendous amounts of damage. I think it's 41 damage to the body. That is relentless amounts of damage. Considering as well, that's basically a large pot removed from your inventory. As that is going to be a costly RPG. Fortunately, they were able to connect to the other side in time. And so now this building is more or less indestructible. ETQ spotting out more. Shooting players down. But fortunately for them, they've still got height. They've still got every opportunity. As well, this finds one. It is Noah that bites their dust as well. Fnagin alongside his team. are going to try and apply some pressure. In fact, it's Anas that picks up a kill onto Mappy. And Trident's going to drop Flick. So all in all, it's looking like quite a costly scenario. Fnagin again just holding W key. Holding the aggression. Just using his pickaxe to slay on through these builds. As ETQ yet again just up top. High ground connecting his build. And this team, they're looking like they're going to be number one right now. They're on top of the world. They've got every opportunity. My question is, if it goes to a heal-off, do they have the facilities for that? I think that's the only way they get beaten here. Yeah, you know, ETQ up on the high ground here. That's a nice shot there. Elvis is going to go down. They spot another player in the zone. He's going to be hard focused. He is just trying to survive right now. But you're in the zone. You're taking damage regardless. You're going to be taken down. It's going to be Gamma Thomas that will finish off Relvis as now... ETQ applies a little bit of pressure onto best player Freddy. We're going to jump into the POV of Gamma Thomas, who is going to be on the ultimate low ground. He is with his one part of his trio, Anas. They have already picked up eight kills, I believe, and they're now on the low ground. Eclipse actually being caught out there. Oh, no. The bounce pad hitting the ramp, and then they were taken down. Lichy is going to fall, or Lichy, should I say. Gamma Thomas will pick up Eclipse as now ETQ continues to get up onto the high ground oh and he hits the God. shot steam and archer is gonna fall as now he's having a look down below best player freddy trying to take down pablo wingo but he actually hits that shot etq will take him down and now it's gonna be a three versus two gamma thomas and anis are on the low ground as now they begin to fight etq nearly actually fallen to his death there that could have been absolutely disastrous now as the harpoon is being used trying to break the bills they need to just try and build out these rockets these rpgs are going to do so much damage if they land Gamma thomas he does have a lot of floppers here and he does have a lot of splashes so he might think about getting into the zone and maybe just going for a heal off here he's just buying time here for the time being as now the shots ring on true as now Anis is just going to begin to hold his build. He's got 400 wood, does Gamma Thomas in his inventory as ETQ begins to come on down. As now he's going to farm up some more mats, just trying to hold these this trio out for the time being. And to be fair, they're doing a very good job of it. Anis and Thomas still on the low ground. Mats are going to be dropped over as Anis may continue to build on true. Thomas now 
It's not the time to go out into the zone just yet. He's waiting and waiting and waiting. ETQ, he's down to 20 HP. Then he needs to be careful that he doesn't go out into the zone and tick for two because he will go down. As now the zone, it's getting smaller and smaller. And this might be Gamma Thomas's crew just to Q, should I say, just to get running. ETQ is going to fall down. It's going to be taken down. And it's going to be a one versus two. And Gamma, Thomas, and Anis, will, are, they are going to take it. It was Anis that just built up, taking all the engagements there. He found two quick kills. And they are going to finish it off with a 12-kill victory. That is definitely going to propel them into first place. Without a doubt, great stuff by them. That guy was, didn't even need to see anything. Did not matter. Anna, he went up to the high ground. He took the fight to his enemies. And he wiped the floor with them. Again, Ryan, do you want to take us through the Intel moments here? So of course, we start with ETQ. Absolutely. This man is an absolute beast. I said that he was the underdog heading into this competition. But my word is he delivered. This accuracy with this legendary heavy assault rifle is unreal. Gets dropped ammo. Plenty of ammo. There's his first knock. Now, he doesn't just stop there. He continues to apply this pressure. Continues to spam on down. Finds a second, I do believe. His teammate actually picks it up. And then again, Eclipse just caught out in the open. Lushi dropped to the floor. ETQ builds up again. Taking this height. Demon dropped. That's his third. And he's already got eight kills at this point. And he bounces out here to grab this loot, which is why he's low HP. Picks up the chug splashes. Anticipated it would be a lot more than one. Had to... At least try and keep it on him at this point. Drops it across so his teammate can prepare for the heal off. He goes down, runs out of the zone. But Anna's doing a great job. He actually knocks the first player. He doesn't get ETQ. He knocks the first, finishes him off, gets the refresh, and jumps back in for seconds. And it works perfectly. You're looking at the scoreboard right now. 3 6 8 is where Flick, Anna's, and Gamma Thomas stand. Second place, of course, ETQ, Pablo Wingu, and Downs. Respectable performance from them. Third place, Dark Zara and Freddy. I think it's all to play for. You look down this scoreboard. Yeah, the point difference explains a fair bit. You know, a hundred point difference between third and first. But who says, you know, Downs, ETQ and Wingu, they're not out of this one just yet. And for first place, Flick, Anis and Gamma Thomas, my word, are they having the times of their lives playing this game. Yeah, absolutely insane game there. That, of course, was the penultimate game. We will be back with the final game of finals day. Please don't go anywhere.
Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Razor Invitational Europe. Just before we start our final game, we're going to throw it to Ryan, who has a little name of someone who's won themselves a little present. Yeah, absolutely. As you know, today is the Razor Viper Mouse giveaway, and the winner of that is Sosi Jolog. I apologize if I butchered your name. Um, yeah, you won. Congratulations to you, my friend. Someone from the administration team will contact you very, very shortly on how to claim that mouse and it will be sent right to your front door which is absolutely awesome but of course as you mentioned peter there's a bigger thing on our hands it's finals day it's the fifth and final game and i think we're just about ready to jump into the action of course it means so so much to every player right now because of course at this time you get first in this game and you're in that top two you're looking at an extremely high chance of a victory royale and that first place finish. But look at Steamy Stacks. So many teams. So much going on. Let's see what teams can do. And yeah, we see now, you know, people are going to farm up. We've only 24 trios in this lobby. So, you know, probably people that were, you know, coming into this finals day thinking they had a chance then... Being shut out in the first four games was probably a little bit too much for them. You know, if you if you're not towards the top side of the leaderboard, they probably think you know there's no point playing. So, which is fair enough, I suppose. If you can't hang with the best, don't stay with the best. If you can't handle the heat, get out of the kitchen. You know. So we are going to see a slightly lesser lobby. You know, we've probably decreased it by in around a third. Uh, as we have 24 trios. Two of them have already been eliminated. Fire Hunter managing to pick up one of those kills early on. As now we see, you know, I'm just having a look. Maybe even to pick up some more. I see uh, Vika, I believe, and Coco over in Salty Terrors as well. Capsi as well as Onyx Wing spots out Vicky and will do a lot of damage to him with that blue heavy assault. He will do a tiny bit more damage. Deceptos is going to be knocked by Wolfie. Kinslow managing a knock himself. Two quick kills for them as we move down to 63 players. And, you know, I think we ha should have a slightly quicker game in this one. Fingers crossed, we very well made it. Only 21, only 21 squads left standing. Of course, the reason we have got a few squads who aren't still playing is because they've realized that they physically cannot get enough points to get within that prize zone. So they just they give up. It's um, unfortunately the harsh reality of it. They do give up. And for now, we're going to see Ronald Extreme just trying to take down that container, get his shields up. And with that, it is going to be a few shots out here and there. However, with 60 players left standing, I doubt we'll see much in terms of contact until about the fourth fifth ring maybe late into the third but for the most part these teams pretty much all have a one poy for themselves every now and then we'll see two groups together of course like you see here on lazy lake but for the most part it should just be a fairly easy time to get some loot yeah absolutely everyone gonna play as passive as possible we all know at this point that'll planning a nice shot but as i was saying you know this point is more used for loot in fact that'll just pulled out the harpoon and took a harpoon to Tohash's face. Finally, they're able to find themselves a kill. Percolino getting an off Tohash with the finish. And Booback and Scaler, they're now looking for blood as he pushes on through. Lovely shot by Booback. Oh, he even takes the L. Talk about disrespect on every level. He's going to finish the job nicely. Get him back up to 194 overall. And that's really punched a hole through the Tohash side. Is Percolino going to try and aggress those shields? quickly evaporated in front of him as he's dropped by 66 and now Booback continues the aggression once more they're going to aggress Percolino got to be careful and Booback actually going to take a shot himself and he's now forced to pop the big shield he picked up off of his kill and in fact he's going to tick because he's burning dropped to 78 and he might even decrease that a little bit further as he continues to aggress as for the time being 
Things are looking upwards for everyone. 56 players already half the lobby, of course, of what we were originally used to. Gone. I mean, having said that, only 72 players, as you mentioned, Jack, connected to us now. And so, it's going to sting a bit. You know, for some people, it's not as many kills as they'd liked. And that really could shift the tides a lot. So, everyone is going to be that little more aggressive this game. And that's why I think we could see this end inside seven zones. And yeah, as we see, Bubak now applying a little bit of pressure down below. He's actually going to take a little bit of pressure here. Nice shot there with that lever shotgun. Of course, one of the new additions to the game uh, in one of the most recent updates. As now, Alpha will get a knock as well. Bubak still looking down below, trying to find Percolino or Tohaj if he can at all. Edit out there as Bubak takes a shot. He needs to be careful. He has been coned and he breaks out of it. But now he's being pushed. A good kill from Percolino. He gets the knock. Now turns his attention onto Scaler, the last remaining player in the trio, who is down on the low ground. He is all alone for the time being. Might be able to get off a mini if he can, but Tohaj is going to push him. He's going to switch over to that heavy assault rifle. He's going to spam it on true. He is going to take him down, and it's a trio eliminated for Tohaj and Co. And as we touched on, you know, it wasn't the best of starts for them, as actually we see Cryox is going to be taken down. Mental Michael, the last player alive, the shakedown going to come in. So they're going to know exactly where he is, but he's going to push over now to Slurpee and... You know, not a lot he can really get done here. Now he's going to be pressured by Onyx Sonny. He throws away a mini. As now he is going to begin to build on up and try and get out. He's taking a little bit of damage. He's in a lot of trouble. Tries to use a bouncer. He's caught in builds. And that's just absolutely disastrous. Not a lot he could have got done there. He is going to be taken down. We're down to 16 trios already. 45 players left in the server. And... I wonder who is going to take this one. Of course, we still see Gamma Thomas uh, and the two guild players. They're still definitely alive. So, you know, they are definitely in with a chance of taking this whole tournament. Without a doubt. And to be honest, Gamma Thomas and Co. have been just unstoppable, really. Like, the only times they've really been eliminated is when they've been third party. They haven't really lost a straight up angel this entire tournament. We look at Alpha right now, again, rejoining his teammates in a bunch of build realities that's people around them. And, well, unfortunately, the Co Demon Covey, I think I say, sir, the last man in this box right now has been caught out. He's been found, he hunted down like a wild animal to the slaughter. Trained, or Train H will try to shut him down. Unfortunately, not spotting him just yet. As we do wait for these players to come into it. Alpha finding a shot connected. Demon dropped to the floor. That's going to be a costly one. As it'll, of course, will be Train H. Alpha that picks up another, finds another knock as well. And you best believe he'll make it a triple. Very well played from him. Kappa C falling to the floor as well as Alpha is now on four, but he's not going to stop there. He hears shots and he sees builds in the distance and what's going to stop him from aggressing right to help his teammate. Of course, Vitality Nick off right here. Going to use those truck splashes to get him up in terms of health to assist Train H Alpha. And of course, now everyone can look to aggress. Everyone can look to succeed in this scenario and they're continuing the aggression. And of course, what happens if you aggress into Train H Alpha? Well, you're going to catch a lever shotgun shot to the head. This legendary variant can do absolute wonders, as you see on screen right now. And you best believe he's going to make it five. Looking to try and make it a quick six. But unfortunately, in fact, fortunately, he'll do exactly that. What a play from Train H Alpha. This man is on fire right now for him and his team. There are nine kills already. And we still got 40 players within this lobby. This team's on a tear. And quite honestly, this could be an unbelievable chance for them to try and shoot themselves up in the scoreboard. Yeah, as I just have a look over to my left, I'm just going to try and see where they actually are on the leaderboard. I can't see them for the time being. Um, maybe one of you guys can help me out if you see them. Actually, no, they're in 8th place. All right, sorry, oh, yeah. place. I have the updated on. one now here as... You know, nine kills, it will propel them. Of course, that is 45 points. It will shoot them up in the leaderboards, but it's worth nothing if you get 45 points and you crash out in 13th place. As there are only 13 trios left, they'll need to get a victory if they want to, you know, maybe even pick up some of the you know, prizes. I don't think they will be able to get the cash prizes. I think they might be a bit too far out of reach. However, Drainage Alpha and Code are just going to take these crystals. They're going to begin to move on forward. 
and rotate into the zone. It should be a pretty free rotation from them as now we see Pravdo, Jamside and Letwick who are near absolutely nobody. They've just free reign at this side of the map as now Toha is now putting a little bit of pressure on the hyphen down below. He's being pressurized. Then the way has been knocked and has been taken care of. Perkolino is the only player alive on Toa's team, but not for long as he is dropped down and he is taken down as Toa is now all alone once again. Perkolino is going to be finished off as now Toa looks for shots on Torelvis down below. He hits one shot, but now he realizes he needs to heal up. He's going to do exactly that. I believe there's two or three trios in and around this area that Toa needs to be careful of. And Train Age Alpha is rotating in. At what point does Toha just walk away from this here? There's absolutely no way he is going to come out on top of this one as a solo. He needs to just try and vacate the area and maybe while everybody is fighting he can get away. Not Hellfire hitting a nice shot editing up through the build. Tagging McConey, then Relvis has that idea and his trio. They're going to begin to move. Toha is just going to be sniped in the back. He's going to have to box up and use those minis. But he has no big pots anymore. He's used all of them. Now, not Hellfire taking a little bit more damage, not too much though. Toha is going up on top of Train Age Alpha, trying to put output a little bit of damage, maybe just to try and ruin somebody else's tournament if he can at all possible. Takes a wall, trying to get oh, onto Train Age Alpha, hits the shot, but he is going to be taken down. It is going to be Toha and his trio eliminated for a final time. And Train Age Alpha will be accredited with the kill as the builds are being broken down from above or below, should I say. Players now a little bit of quiet. They are going to heal up as 35 players remain. 12 trios are left. I'll tell you what, for Alpha as well, seven eliminations on him alone. His team is going to be doing admirably in terms of points from kills. Right now, they just need to go for that placement. And for Alpha, he's got enough shields to keep himself satisfied for the time being as well. With Hyphen caught out below him, it looks like in a moment he might look to make that potentially nine kills here. Moving on these two members and Crouchy on their position, spamming down these walls wherever possible. And so continue making his way on forward. He's tagged down a little bit from above from a third party team, but until now, continue trying to spam his way on forward. Ringing out shots wherever possible, trying to catch out one of these members, but they go for the quick rotation. Nikov, I believe, will be tagged on down as well. Noah as well. Very, very low on HP. It wouldn't even matter. Again, contact made again. More shots ring out either way. Nothing too extreme for the time being, though. As Alpha holds on by the skin of his teeth. Knocks on down, unfortunately. The players around him ready to finish the job. And may it fall down to Colisio now to try and third party this. Yeah, and now Hunter's Haven. Just outside of it. Lots of action going down. Still every opportunity for everyone to try and make things work right now. As for the time being, everyone seems quite content on their position, their location, all of that. Kusha is going to take a bit of damage and eventually he's going to drop to the floor and that will scream horror for everyone else as Blaster has watched his teammates go down. Train H Alpha finally removed, but he might be able to pick up the pieces. Spots out the players. He knows he's there, but he's taking big damage. And that is going to be problematic. He's got the chug splashes. He's going to pop the minis. He's going to maybe try and find the res if possible. And now, Blaster caught out in the open. Going to have to run away. Going to have to evacuate this area. And in fact, he's going to go back in for more and might be able to pick up a kill. I think him just being here as a nuisance has provided enough problems for the opposition that they were able to find himself the kill. Blaster now up to four kills. But it might just be the beginning of the end as he's gunned down, removed from the server in its entirety. And that is the last time we'll see of them today. Now we have a quick look at the map. You know, people are kind of spread out for the time being. Got you. Now, just going to farm up. I believe Letwick is going to go down. Moab's going to pick up that one. The knock, but not the kill just yet. Might be able to finish him off. Got you in history. Oh, they've only picked up one kill for the time being. As now, they will begin their rotation. They're just going to try and drive around retail. There, of course, 35 seconds until the third zone will begin to move. And we've already lost a substantial amount of players. Aspect is going to be taken down and finished there by VP Jamside. As now, they are just... Jachu is just going to fuel up the car with this petrol can. Got to pick back up his harpoon. They're going to get in the car and drive away. So they are going to continue to move on out. They're going to continue to move on forward. And they might be able to get a decent position in the zone. Which I believe is up on a mountain if I'm not mistaken. Part of it is indeed. And that's exactly where they are going to pinpoint. 
that is probably the place what they where they are going to go indeed there actually is a big build in front of them so they won't be going near there they will continue to move on around and it looks like they're going to drive into catty cor corner where it is pretty densely populated for the time being there's at least two or three trios here and jachu and his trio will be the fourth going to drive straight through demon archer's build but not turn around they are going to hop out now and maybe look to take a fight or maybe just look to box up and i think box up is going to be the correct option here nine trios left 24 players left in the server catty corner could take a turn for the worst in the next few minutes i suspect that he really does need to go for this group at least really does need to go for a fight they've only got one elimination to their name right now and unless they plan on going for ultra late game players which rather they could do with four shield splash shields ready but for the most part it will be a bit of a rough fight for them for now we look over to fanagen so is that fanagen Fanagen. Again, all producer giving us the best names for the time being. But for the most part, they've tried to look out for early on, trying to catch out these members, just coning above him. We look elsewhere, though. It's going to be Let Lick, who will fall again. Guavado able to try and pressure down to try and catch out any members who have been caught around him, though. But there's no real response. Again, the main players they're fighting are from below. So trying to just get up to this high ground is just a matter of survival. It's silver lining, to say the least, but with... Gravano hitting some oh, beautiful oh, shots like yeah, that. Like great, that. great stuff for the time being. However, their build is destroyed. Even though he hits a lovely shot, he'll fall nonetheless. Pablo Wingo able to take him down. Looks like he'll go for the kill as well. Ready on death from above. Well, the downside though. Jam side, the last man left standing. One versus, well, however many are around him. I assume it's three at this point. We're trying to catch out some of them. He'll box in himself, trying to hold for the time being. But as he worries and as he kind of cowers towards this box, he does force himself into a corner, waiting players to come their way as he continues just ringing out shots wherever possible, building as best he can, but let's see to what avail. Yeah, absolutely, and this is where things get interesting because, of course, we've already seen someone break down all these builds, so what's saying it can't happen again, and I think Jamside realises this, getting down to a more suitable level, but actually caught on the hillside could be problematic. Fortunately, he is able to disengage completely, but being charged down by three players isn't the prettiest of sights, as it's Flick that was leading the charge. He did take a shot. Jamside dropped to the floor. He is, in fact, eliminated by Anas, and now... We look over to Relvis and his teammate, who are just at the south side of this new zone. They'll continue to move on in, using the car to the best of their abilities. We've seen some very smart plays with the car over the time, especially in late game, driving it into buildings, blowing it up, things like that. Just trying to apply pressure where needed. But for this team, it seems to be that they're willing to live in it for the time being. Finally, going to disengage and get onto mother nature and build up themselves into boxes don't want to let the car disappear quite possibly looking for an opener looking for something looking for some sort of pressure that they can apply to but being only two it's quite costly and it really can mean problems as now everyone sorts of sits around and wait there's 20 players eight teams everyone is going to give it their all in the final few zones everyone's going to play as passive as possible yeah, everybody's gonna just see it you know you don't want to make a mistake everybody wants to you know think about uh what they want to do everyone's being slow everyone's being methodical everybody is just having a look around seeing what they can find you know seeing where they can find the open and where they can catch a team out and we're just going to jump into the pov of the current leaders it is flick Anis, and thomas who are definitely in pole position to take this one and take the victory i definitely think that they cannot be stopped especially with the way that these guys are playing they haven't really put a foot wrong any game as i just have a quick look at the leaderboard i believe you know they've one win they've one second one win with 12 limbs one second place with 13 limbs in game two or game three sorry they had six limbs in fifth place and in game seven they had three limbs in seventh place you know so they are well deserved to be out in front. They haven't really played, you know, that like they haven't put a foot wrong. They haven't died in the early game. They've always played it safe. They've always come out on the top with kills and they've really come to life in these last few zones. 13 seconds left until this zone will begin to move on in. And these teams might be in a little bit of trouble because they are going to have to build up. They're going to have to try and move up on top of the mountain. And this will be very, very hard considering, you know, these guys, they don't have very much rotation. You know, uh, they will now begin to move on forward as now Dallin trying to use you no know, 
just this natural cover of the hill. You need to be careful though, because Case Light and Fire Hunter might just have a look and have a peer over Salon. It's gonna shoot off a sniper bullet. It's not gonna connect to anything, but it looks like they are gonna be able to rotate rather freely for the time being. Flo is gonna continue to build on up, switching over to his hard materials so he doesn't get shot down. Can farm up a little bit of wood as well. And now, you know, we haven't actually seen too much of an engagement, which is surprising. You know, I didn't see too many people being held, too many people being focused when they were rotating in, which is very, very surprising to me. I thought the players on the high ground, Fire Hunter and Co. were going to rain down holy hell from above. But I guess, you know, they're feeling uh, a little bit generous today. Without a doubt, for the time being, Fire Hunter and Go, there we go. It's like few early shots down onto these members again nothing too extreme though but with the high ground advantage right now they're in a perfect position to move on forward and with the storm eye moving they're going to maintain a high ground advantage no matter where they go with such a strong start point let's see what the response is as flow and co will try to take out some of these members again they bastard themselves over to the other side of this ring again need to be careful before folding out those owners they could end up taking a substantial amount of damage but for the time being they actually go for a bit of a sneakier option they've hugged the side of the zone taking their time not committing anywhere too heavily and not committing to any fights until we see these final couple of zones the best player freddy he'll look to make his way up to the high ground as well he's rain hell down on anyone who comes past them again trying to break their way into that initial zone as well as onto anyone who tries to rotate Absolutely. Retail row looking like the end uh, zone here as teams continue to apply pressure. Teams continue to try and force each other out as Anas finds another kill. It's like to fall and that leaves us with 19 players, 8 teams remaining. And now Freddy looks to try and apply pressure onto the current first place team as Anas Flick and of course Thomas. And in fact Flick's just eaten so much lead. It's Freddy to drop him to the floor, drop him completely out of the game as well. Thomas actually going to get dropped as well. And that's scary. For a team that I was hyping up to be the number one, they've been swiftly removed. Oh, the now it screams terror, it screams problems. Shot's going to continue to rattle on through. And at this point, Zara looking to apply some form of pressure, going to continue to fire off shots, getting a dink, getting a tap. But unfortunately... It isn't quite enough. It's not going to put anyone to their knees just yet. And at this point in time, there's 35 seconds until this zone collapses. There's still 16 players. There's still every opportunity for everyone in this server to win. But looking right now, Zara has a great opportunity. Wow. A laser accuracy dropping down Mikoni. And that's going to scream problems for Hyphen because he's dropped to the floor. He won't be able to res his teammate. And that then means they're down to just one. Zara sniped as well. Dropped to the floor. I don't know how it happened. I think Flo has found one. Demon going to build up high. And the high ground swiftly removed. Oh, Demon has to drop. He's low HP in the storm. He's going to have to pop a flopper at least for the meantime. Things are getting hectic now as it's Flo to find one. ETQ and another Fnagin. Finding his way into the scoreboard as well. Flo going to drop another one. It's ready to fall to his knees. And now we're heading into a very intense moment. Now 11 players, 5 teams. Everyone wants it. Demon pushing back into the zone. Trying to shoot through the bush to try and not get caught out by anyone. Slime, swinging, to go, excuse me. Swinging open that door. Cracking someone for 101. But his time was imminent. Of course it's ETQ. And we're down to 10. We are down to 10 players left in the server of the final game of the Razor Invitational Europe number five. That is as relevant now. Just going to continue to build players out. I wonder who is going to be able to win this final game. ETQ is still in and around there knocking about. And they have a very good position on the leader. Pablo Wing is going to take a lot of damage. Relvis is going to lose one of his trio as now he lands on top of flow. Hits a shotgun shot. But he's going to have to back away. Now has a look in the zone. Pablo Wingo is going to be knocked by Sal and ETQ. Picking up a few kills before he goes down. And now it's all going to be left on Fnage and Mappy and Zani who are up on the high ground. They are applying pressure on the players down below. Low. It is going to be Flo and Salon that are going to be knocked. It's going to be Mappy, Zani, and Fanage and Doda are going to pick up the victory royale in the last game of the day. And a six kill win. Very well done to them indeed. But I don't know if it's just going to be enough to topple the leaders. Without a doubt, we take a look at over towards our Intel moments, of course. And to kick things off, it will be Blaster and Co. The last man of standing in Nikov's team. And again, he's just swarmed. Hype is able to take him down. And uh, with that, 
This was over towards Corvado, I believe it, his name is. Again, trying to hold on. Once his build was destroyed from below, he dies to full damage. And these players just try to swarm and They try to get a bit of a cheeky shot in on him here. Again, takes a bit of damage before dropping on down before he gets taken down. Go highlight Zara again. Really, really strong. He was the contestant to probably win this along with best player friendly, but they were just snipes clean out of midair every time they tried to get across again. Nice shot on to Mikanov there, but it just was not enough again. Able to take down the first thing. There's the response instantly finding him. And well, the bait setup came in through admirably. Again, reverse now again, trying to get up into this zone. The bounce pad was perfect, but it's right into the awaiting arms of Flo. He's good for one, but as he tries to get back in, he's tagged as he enters that zone, trying to pick up some healing from his teammate. Fanagen from the high ground was a doubt in my mind. They wouldn't lose that from how close that round was. We take a look at the scoreboard, and of course, again, doesn't seem to be as a surprise. I believe it is Flick, Anas, and Gamma Thomas who take the victory in this fifth, or no, yeah, fifth cup of the Razor Invitational Europe. That has been the final game of this cup, but do not go anywhere because, or do not go anywhere, at least for now, because we do have our sixth cup this time next week. Our sixth and final one, that'll be from me, Jack and Ryan, of course. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.